Okay, we're going to start. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the March 12, 2020 meeting of the Code Enforcement Board. The meeting will now come to order. May we have a roll call, Madam President, Madam Secretary. <laughs> I just elevated you. <laughs> Mr. Gonzalez. Present. Ms. Roby. Here. Ms. McLean. Here. Mr. Harrington. Here. Ms. Himes. Here. Ms. Pending. Here. Uh, Not a quorum. We do have a quorum. All right. Uh, now we're going to look at the minutes. There's one thing I wanted to bring up about the minutes, and that was that the date of minutes on the top is wrong, I think. <laughs> okay. It says they're the minutes for the January 9 meeting. I used the previous. I know. I, I <laughs> figured that happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'll correct that. Okay. So what, what was the date? February 13th. Right. February 13th was it Feb it should be February 13th yes. okay all right so um, everybody's had a chance to review it and um, we made that correction can I have a motion to approve so approved second. Uh, mr. Harrington made a motion and miss Himes a second all in favor say aye. Aye. aye like sign opposed motion carries anybody need to disclose any ex parte communication no. Okay, do we have any announcements? Yes, ma'am. Madam Secretary. <laughs> we, I'm demoted again. <laughs> yep, you're demoted. That's it. You're done. <laughs> Case number two, CEB 02-20-34 at 410 Lockhart Street is in compliance 3-5-2020. Case number three, CEB 02-20-16 <laughs> at 156 Oakwood Drive is in compliance 3-5-2020. Case number six, CEB 02-20-23 at 147 Lee Street is in compliance 3-11-2020. Case number 18. Hold on. Page eight. Yep, page eight. CEB 11-19-281 at 915 South Palmetto Avenue is in compliance 3-11-2020. Case number 27, page 10. CEB 03, <clears throat> excuse me, 20-64 at 1345 Sunset is in compliance 3-5-2020. Case number 35, page 12. CEB 03-20-49 at 828-826 North Peninsula is in compliance 311-2020. Okay, thank you. And what is this extra piece of paper that we it's have a letter here? that goes with case number 37. Does everybody have this? Everyone has okay. this. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Today we're going to start with, well, would the code officers please come forward and be sworn in? Let's do that first. <clears throat> do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, here's our procedure, everyone. We will be calling case by number, and for the most part, in order as they are listed on the agenda. <clears throat> if there are any police officers who have to get back to assignment and want to testify, we'll hear those cases first. If there are attorneys in the room that have to be in court, we'll also hear those cases in the beginning. I don't see any private attorneys here. Any, okay. any attorneys here? No. Okay. When your case is called, please come forward and be sworn in. State your name and address for the record. Our recording, our proceedings are recorded, so please speak into the mic. Uh, the board hears from the code department first and the code officers, and then you'll be given the opportunity to respond and direct your responses, please, to the board. Witnesses, in some cases, may also testify following the same procedures. Okay. Uh, so we'll start then. We're ready to start. <clears throat> if we go past 11 o'clock, we'll take a short break. All right, we're going to start with our lean reviews. Lean review number one. 
again. She's gonna play it again. Let me get this done. CEB 11-19-267 at 557 Park Drive. The respondent present? Yes. Okay, come forward, please, sir. <coughs> right, this is one. State your name and address, please. Uh, Alan Engelmeyer, 8909 Spring Avenue. Ma'am, Carolyn. Raise your right hand, please. Right hand, please. Oh. <laughs> the Do other right hand. I haven't been getting uh, very good sleep lately. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll hear from our code department first. Okay. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, Anthony Jackson, attorney for the <clears throat> city of Daytona Beach. Um, uh, we're here on this lien review. The inspector is Sarah Kirk. Um, and this is a situation where uh, the, the case started in July of 2019. Uh, it came before you for imposition of a fine on December 12th. It became a compliance on January 3rd. I think looking back at the um, uh, minutes that I think it came uh, as an um, uh, imposition of a fine on November and then it was extended to December with, and um, there was a request or some indication from the respondent that he was out of state. He wanted to put it off for the holiday and come later. Uh, in fact, I saw a note from Ms. Well, Ms. McLean kind of didn't, felt it was important that we treat everyone, whether they were yeah, local or, or, or distant, right. the same. And so uh, fine was imposed. I'm, I'm told by the, the inspector that he has done a, a, a good bit of work and, and it's, it's, it's been a considerable amount of money in, in what he's done. And so um, we're, we're asking to reduce the fine to 50%, uh, reducing it to um, $1,100. That's a tender miss. That's still uh, too much for me. I had, oh, wait, wait, uh, wait a second, sir. It's not finished. Excuse me. I, 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 I tender uh, Ms. Kirk if you have any other okay. questions this regarding is, yeah. is this in compliance or a good bit of work? In compliance? Yes, yes. it's in compliance with the code. Okay. okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now uh, you can Since then, I've, uh, I'm on the property. I'm, I've done a, a substantial amount of work to it. I'm putting a fence, 400 foot of fence up. I have a, a permit right here to put the fence up. It's gonna cost me $6,000 to correct this problem. Uh, I am not the problem here. Um, and I don't think I should be fined anything because I didn't have anything to do with that trash being on my property. It's a cut through uh, Park, Park Drive and Division Street. The people, there's, there's open drug markets, there's prostitution, and they're throwing garbage on my property. I try, I try, you know, it's a hardship for me to come down here on the holidays. I have a family in Maryland, and like I said, I spent $6,000 so far, and I'm doing all the work myself because I can't afford to get a contractor to do it for me. I'm a 69-year-old Vietnam vet, and I make $15,000 a year on Social Security. Is that house occupied? There's no house on the property. It's a vacant lot. They just passed the law in October saying that you could put a fence around the uh, vacant lots. And that's what I'm doing. That will correct the problem from Park Street to Division Street. I need some clarification on that. So, have we not always been able to fence off a vacant lot? No, they just passed the law this year. Or last year. So they just passed that law when? October. October. Right, you're just saying you're allowed to do that. But before that, you weren't allowed to put a fence on? And yeah, that was, that's crazy. <laughs> but, but I am not the problem. I am the solution. And I don't think I should be fined anything because I had nothing to do. This was on them right off the side of the road, too. It wasn't 
you know, there's there's a there's a strip. So of there's land. not even a house there, and yet all this trash is accumulated. Yes, the people stand out there and just smoke and drink and do drugs. Police, Madam Chair, have police question. been out there? Mm. They drive through in the mornings. I noticed. I've been camping on the property, take care of the property, to solve the problem. I've been on. I've been camping for three weeks now, in a camper. That That's why I haven't had a shower in three weeks. I have a question, if I may, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Uh, it was stated that most of the work was done, but there's an affidavit of compliance in the package. So, and that he came into compliance in January, according to this right. affidavit. Yeah, yeah, yeah enough. I'm sorry. If, yeah, if I can just stand corrected, I was trying to uh, advise based on what I thought I was understanding when the, when I spoke to the inspector. That was not accurate. It, oh. as he came to compliance on the day that's indicated in the record, which was which is January third. So. What is the date of this picture, which is obviously not uh, in compliance? There were several pictures. That's January third, yeah, right there. Problem. So that was a compliance okay. picture. Okay. Right okay. There. Uh, yeah. That was wow. December This is 12. right off the road there, too. So what is it that you... Well, what the neighbors are doing is putting trash okay, on my we property. Under, we, yeah. we understand that. What I'm asking you is what, code enforcement. what are you doing now if the property's in compliance that requires you to be on the property for the last three weeks? Well, I had to get a permit. That took a week and a half. Okay. Here's the, here's the uh, plan. Okay. Well, good. Um, and it took a week and a half to get in. I've been working on it for the last week okay. since I got the permit. Okay. And, you know, it's just, it's, this is not easy for me. I shouldn't, I, just because I bought a piece of land doesn't mean I have to put a guard on the property. A fence isn't going to help you. You know that. No, They're just going to throw it over well, the fence. Let me uh, 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 go ahead. I see there's a post that, what is it? Is it? Oh, the That's a no trespass. No, tra no so you've, trespass. That is you've a no trespass. Posted it. Has it been up there all the time? Yes, it has. I have no trespassing signs all around the area. That doesn't stop them. There's a path that cut right through the property, and I. And this is a, this is not a, a standard fence. I'm putting a security fence up. It's a six foot chain link fence that's locked. Just out of curiosity. You want to, I mean, I don't think anybody wants to climb a six foot. Just out of chain link curiosity, fence. did you look at this property before you bought it? <laughs> Yes, it was. There were, I didn't see anything on it. I mean, yeah, nothing major. And, and you know, just because I bought it doesn't mean I'm responsible for other people throwing garbage on my property. I'm the victim. It's trying to clean up the property. Well, <laughs> I the kind of victim you are belongs with the police department. Right. They should be taking care of these people that are, are just not letting them out of order. Okay. We're all right. Well, I no, think I, we all. Fully understand the situation. It's your property. I, you're, you're responsible for your property. Um, so we'll, we're going to make a determination now. Unless somebody has one more thing to say. Oh, I was just going to say I, I don't. It isn't on the trespass arrest site right now. Yes. It can be put on the trespass arrest. Oh, it is site. not oh, it on. No, it okay. is not. Well, let's so do that. So you need to just go with the uh, okay. law can enforcement. One, can I ask a one, one last question? Yeah, sure. Um, in the future, you're going to put the fence up, uh, but in the future when you are not here in Daytona Beach, have you made provisions for the trash to be picked up that's going to be put in front of that I fence? Have, I, have, I, I don't know anybody in this city. Absolutely nobody. I have to, you know, I, I did get somebody to clean up that mess, you know, and I did, you know, I just, yeah. I, I did, maybe I took on a little bit more than I can handle here. Mm. Uh, would anybody, does anybody have any other opinions? Uh, I do. Okay. I know in my experiences in New York City, uh, areas like this, the owners would hire the people that hang out there, mm -hmm. one or two people, and pay them to keep it clean. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, I do have, a, I have somebody now that will take care of the property. In the future, okay. In the future, so and, and gotcha. I do have to give a key to the police department. For how much? Eleven. To have access. All right. Sorry. Uh, 
All right. Uh, I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead. I'd like to motion that we, uh, we meet the city halfway on the request for reduction to six hundred dollars. Oh, please, please don't. Th that, no, we're I'm in the not, middle of. I, we're not, in the I middle. We are in the middle of a motion. So there's been a motion made by Mr. Gonzalez. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Harrington. Is there any discussion from the board? All in favor say aye. 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 Like aye. sign opposed. Aye. So it's uh, f five to one. The motion passes. We've reduced it to six hundred dollars. I, I still I don't understand. I really don't understand you fighting me. And it's payable within 30 days. Lean number, review number two, CEB 12-19-286, 644 Madison Avenue. Respondent present, come forward please. State your name and address for the record. Uh, Scott Allen Reed, uh, 644 Madison Avenue, Daytona Beach, Florida. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Can I ask you one question? So, uh, you're Scott Allen Reed, yes, and this address in here for the lien review is Sar a Sarasota address. What yes, I, I, I live in Sarasota. You live in Sarasota. You're talking that this is the that is the uh, address of the address. property. Yes. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Jackson. Yes, yeah, so I'm Madam Chair, members of the board. This is before you fully review the in inspector is Mark Jones, and uh, Mr. Jones uh, has indicated, as noted in the um, on your um, agenda, that this uh, respondent was first notified in April of two. Uh, 2019. Um, he came before you and ultimately a fine was imposed on January 9th of 2020. And was not until February of, of um, 19th of 2020 that he brought the property into compliance. Uh, in this situation was failure to obtain a rental license and Mr. Jones indicates that there were many inspections, um, many of them being set, in fact, they were all set by the, by the uh, tenant and, and were constantly being canceled. Um, and ultimately, the uh, owner came and when he, he came, uh, he, he finally took care of it. Um, Mr. Jones worked this case for about a 10 month time period. He's asking that there be no reduction um, to the lien. And I tend to Mr. Jones if you have any factual questions of Mr. Jones. Okay. Mr. Reed, what would you like to tell us? Well, uh, basically, um, I'd like to re request some uh, relief. Uh, and I'm fully aware that I'm responsible for the property. I understand that. I'm not here to Good. <laughs> Thank debate you. that. Um, but I have some very uh, difficult tenants. Um, they're an older couple, retired. Uh, he has um, kidney failure and has to go to uh, dialysis several times a week. I'm not exactly sure how often. And the wife has COPD, and I, I don't know. I don't know if she's having memory issues or what. But basically, when I first received the notice that uh, the house needed to be inspection, I called Mr. Jones, and I asked him, "Okay, well, what do we do here?" And he goes, "Well, just you know, we need to make an appointment." I go, "Okay," and I asked that um, that they that he coordinate with the tenant instead of playing three-way tag, because. It's very difficult sometimes 
when you call this person and you can't get a hold of them and then you lose the date and all that kind of stuff and if they can just talk and meet together it seems to be the best way of doing it at least I thought at the time okay and um, but anyway uh, they would make a date and then they would cancel it unbeknownst to me. Are they still there? Yes ma'am. And you're in compliance now you've had your yes. inspections and basically, you basically have... once I found out what needed Done. I got everything done within 30 days and set up the inspection. And how was the final inspection? Uh, how did that happen? How did that yeah. happen? The well, final inspection. Are you referring to the time what, when you passed? It? When you passed the inspection. Um, basically, I I came over to you make sure over. that I was there. Right. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. I was just really kind of tired of them. Yeah. Of, well, know, of Mark course. coming to the house. Right. And then nobody being there. Right. And um, and I understand the frustration. I understand that completely. Um, but once I, you know, got Mark's list, which was very helpful, a little punch list, I could go right. down and I fixed it all, and I got it done within 30 days. And then I tried to get a um, uh, another inspection, and then we had an inspection set, and then it got canceled and moved again because of whatever reasons. Right. And. Uh, and then we were finally able to make it on. Okay. Okay. All right. Does the board have any questions for anybody? Uh, Mr. Jones. Uh, Jones, uh, I'm with Good the morning. city of Daytona. Good morning. Neighborhood services and my credentials on file. Yes, sir. And what is your input on this matter? Well, it's very clear. Uh, compliance was due on April 15th. I talked with the, with uh, Mr. Scott and, I mean, Mr. Reed, and we did. Uh, Mr. Scott, sorry, Mr. Reed, <laughs> <laughs> on back, and he said for me to contact the tenant. I contacted the tenant on May 10th, and then again on June 6th, June uh, 10th, and both times uh, she said she was out of town, and I'd have to reschedule. We then scheduled an inspection on December 11th, and again the tenant canceled. She again said she was out of town. We then scheduled another inspection on January 3rd, and when I got there for that inspection, the tenant wasn't home. Uh, we then uh, came before the board and you issued a fine on January 9th. And on January 16th, I was finally able to have an inspection, a rental inspection. Uh, we then scheduled the re-inspection on February 17th. And again, the tenant called and canceled that. Okay. That's when I, we, I okay. talked with uh, the owner and we uh, he attended the final inspection. Now, one thing I'd like to add, if I may, is that... Can you let him finish, please? Excuse Were me. You Were you finished, finished Mr. Yes, Jones? I'm done. I'm oh, okay. That's all right. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. Um, on that uh, 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 inspection that was scheduled for uh, January 3rd, I spoke to them the day before. And I said, okay, we've got the inspection tomorrow. Are you all right? Oh, yeah, we're all set. Yeah, we, we understand you are yeah. having tenant issues, so yeah. we're, we need to get beyond that at this yeah. point. I, 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 have what a, we're going Mr. Reed. I just have one question when he's done. Go ahead. Go ahead. When did you actually complete all the repairs that you needed to um, have the inspection? I completed everything on, I received the notice in the mail of what needed to be done. Yeah. Um, so when actually, I take that back. Mr. Jones sent me a uh, email. Okay. What well, was uh, that? On date? January 24th. When did you get and the? Then I said, okay, I know what to do now. And then I finished everything by February 6th. Okay. Okay. And and that's when I tried to get uh, an inspection, but we were able to have that happen. Until so this 6th. isn't for your lack of getting the repairs done. <laughs> this is strictly well, just, inspection. I understand you got a lot of things going on, but I mean, as soon as I got a list, I said, okay. Ooh. I have a question. Go ahead. Am I looking at this correctly, June? Mm -hmm. You can help me. Was there eight pieces of mail that went to your home where you live about this over the course of those um, months? I'm not sure if it was eight. No. eight Close to it. Mm. Eight, eight so the, so the city reached out to you personally eight times. Excuse me? So the city code enforcement reached out to you where you live eight times. Is uh, that yeah, right? I believe so, yeah. Okay. So it's just a matter you finally bit the bullet and came over Excuse yourself. Me. It's just a matter you finally bit the bullet and came over here personally. No, it wasn't that. It was basically <laughs> the fact that, I mean, I have no problem coming over. I mean, I just spoke with people and they said it wasn't 
critical that I be okay. there. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, but that's that was what the problem okay. was. Your tenants weren't well, reliable okay. to do it, so you had yeah. to come over. But you had already completed the repairs <clears throat> quite a bit before that. Um, no, as soon as we got a date, I came over. Yeah. All right, would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, what was the city's recommendation again, please? The, city, the city's recommendation was the no total amount, no reduction. Uh, and I oh. made that motion. And Mrs. Himes has made the motion for, uh, to impose the lien. Second. And there's a second by Mr. Gonzalez, and the lien amount is $4,624, $4,624. Let's have a vote, please. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, like, no. sign, like sign opposed? No. Five to one. Motion carries. Okay. Let's move on to lien number three. And that's payable in 30 days, sir. CEB 10-19-221-724 Marion Street. Respondent present. Huh. Okay. Have you heard from the respondent? Have you heard from the respondent? No. Uh, the inspector says no. Okay. I can make a motion. No. Well, let's hear let let's hear the city's case and recommendation at this point. Okay, um, Madam Chair, the city's request is since it's their motion and uh, or their request for reduction and not they're not present, the preference of, of the uh, 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 supervisors that we not hear it. That you what? That it not be heard. That we just go ahead and give them up if they elect to want to uh, refile that they could refile. Do we need to take an action? Though, I'm sorry. Do we need to take an action to prove it or deny it? Yeah. Do you want to just continue it? Well, well I'm, we wanna... I'm concerned that they, I mean, there was no communication. That's why I asked mm -hmm. there, if there was communication, whether somebody had an issue getting here today, uh, but just not showing up is not really good faith to me. I agree. Yeah. Uh, 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 but I don't know how we hear both sides if we don't have the respondent present. But Well, as, as I just uh, spoke with um, uh, Mr. Sykes, what we've done in the past is uh, you have... Uh, made a decision whether, and we left that as a board decision, okay. whether you wanted to continue it or deny it or what action you elect to take. Okay. But they can refile or it's dead after we make our decision. You can deny without prejudice anything to refile. You can deny it without prejudice. I'll give an opportunity they want to refile. That's what it's called, deny without prejudice. So they can appeal that. So they go ahead and bring it back. And bring it back. So, uh, uh, Cheryl entertained <coughs> a motion to deny uh, a lien reduction with prejudice. Without, so, without, without, without prejudice. Uh, that's the so on you. What? It depends on you whether you're prejudiced or not. Yeah. <laughs> so moved. Motion, Mr. Gonzalez, is there a second? A second. Uh, second is Roby. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. He's late. Okay. Uh, lean number four. CEB 05 19 95. 1124 Lakewood Park Drive. Respondent present? Yes. 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 Good. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Hi. State your name and address, please. Thomas Uter, 928 Sycamore Street, Daytona, Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Huger, how are you related to Jerlene Stiggins? 
I, I was contacted and asked to assist her because she was having a difficult request in the city. So as a contractor, I coordinated having a demolition job to uh, bring So you're a contractor. Yes. Okay. And you have, you're allowed to speak for her. You have permission to speak for her yes, today. She received a letter from the city. Okay. Just wait. We're going to let the uh, code people talk first. And then we'll give you a chance. <clears throat> yes, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, this is before you for lien review. The inspector is Tom Kleeg. Uh, Mr. Kleeg advised us that um, I'll, I'll start on, on, on the front end, and we're asking that there be no reduction. Uh, this is a house where um, it was uh, constructed through one of the assistance programs through the city, uh, utilizing grant funds, was constructed. Then it had a fire. Um, the um, uh, respondent um, desire was for the city to provide, uh, or at least sought, the, the respondent sought uh, grant assistance for uh, re repair and rehabilitation after the fire, which the city didn't grant. And they elected to do nothing. And that's why it stayed in this state. And so um, the inspector is asking that there be no reduction. Okay. Was there, sir, was there any insurance on this property? I'm not sure. And I will, I'm sorry, I do tender, I missed the okay. um, right. plea for Mr. Huger, what would you like to tell us? Well, first of all, um, the Stiggins is on a, uh, a uh, monthly uh, assistance, and she's, she's not financially able. She was not financially able, first of all, to renovate her property. So she went through the city uh, community development program. Uh, she asked for assistance in getting the demolition done, which she did not receive. But she had nowhere to turn. So I, as I said, I was asked to assist her. And we got the demolition taken care of for her. She's not financially able to sustain a $10,000 Questions from the board? So the house is <coughs> demolished at this point. And Ms. Stiggins is living somewhere else at this point. And you claim that she does not have the financial ability to pay the fine. How will she rebuild that? But you stated she wanted to rebuild the house. She's working with family members to try to get her in a position to uh, get another mortgage. The city condemned the house. What, yeah, when, when did that happen? Can you tell us when the house was condemned? The house was uh, originally cited in uh, 228 and it was condemned on I believe 620 of 19, June 19th of uh, 2019. The fire took place in 2018. Would the city normally give a grant to an uninsured property? No, she had, she had a grant to build the house, and yeah, then the, the, they, she, they, she wanted another grant to rebuild it. That I understand. Them. Right, no. Would, they, they, they would issue a grant money to somebody that doesn't have the property insured? I'm not sure about yeah, this. Yeah, I, I don't know that that's our issue. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're, you're talking of she, she did hardship. She did talk to me a couple of times, wanted to use her her income tax check to start rebuilding it, but I, I advised her. It I mean, look. it's open when you declare financial hardship. I think insurance is a but I don't factor. think she had insurance at the time. So. I have a question. It's not, not our business. Yeah. I have a question. It might not be, my question might not be our business, but it helps me to make a decision. Uh, 
Was there an investigation and an at fault of the fire? Uh, I, I was not sure about that. Oh. We didn't go into it. I, I don't believe it was arson, if that's what you're getting at. Well, I just, uh, I, yeah. yeah. Like just I said, it would have been an arson investigation, condemned right. sign on it if it was right. arson. But I think it was a natural cause, the electrical or whatever. Thank you. So basically, what is the city's the reason for no reduction. No reduction. any reduction is financial hardship. That's the reason. That that's yes. Okay. I mean, for this particular <clears throat> case. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It says here she's applied for a loan, and it's been when she came before us um, back in July. <clears throat> she got pre-approved by the bank to bit rebuild. Well, then there, sorry, there has to be some kind of insurance money there. It doesn't matter uh, about insurance. Well, I, I think uh, the ten thousand, if somebody has a hardship. Mm -hmm. It's a greater hardship than if they had to pay 5000 There's a difference in meeting the hardship. One makes it more difficult. The one makes it just a little less difficult. So what's uh, your motion? Well, my motion is that we reduce the fine to $5,000. All right, we have Second. a motion on the floor from Mr. Gonzalez to reduce... The motion to five thousand dollars, and the second was from Mr. McLean. Yes. Sure. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Does it include the twenty-four dollars or not? Yeah. Does it include twenty-four dollars, or just uh, yeah. just five thousand even? Just five thousand even. All right. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. All in favor, say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Reduced it to five thousand dollars. Thank you very much. Okay. Last lane, thank you. Our last lane review is lane review 5, CEB 09 19 194 at 223 219 Madison Avenue. Respondent present? Come forward, please. I have to send him an invoice. I have to send him an invoice. Ms. Kunde? Yes, sir. The um, case number three, lien review number three, yes. is now here. She came from St. Augustine, and she was just late getting here. Okay. Well, we'll go back to that one then. Well, I don't know that we'll... Well, yeah, you dismissed you did not it without... We did not okay. We could okay. make a motion to reopen it. Right. So we'll make a motion to reopen it after we do... Okay, let's do this one, and then we'll go back to that one. State your name and address, please. Uh, good morning. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Mr. Jackson. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for lien review. The inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones advised that this, first of all, I'll tell you that he's requesting that there be no reduction. <coughs> he advised that this. It's a circumstance, another circumstance where there were multiple failed inspections. This case started back in June of 2019. The, uh, it ultimately came before the board for imposition of a fine in January, on January 9th of 2020. And then it was on January 19th when Mr. Jones finally had heard from them to schedule a reinspection. And so when that was scheduled, they ultimately he came into compliance on February 12th. The lien accrued to uh, $3,400, so it ran for 34 days. And um, as I said, Mr. Jones is asking that there be no reduction. And I turn to Mr. Jones. Okay. Well, Mr. Percy, go ahead. Uh, the, the first time Mr. Jones uh, uh, put a notice on my door, and uh, I came here and applied for a uh, non-rental uh, license. 
you a question. You came to the first hearing. Yes. Mm -hmm. There were one, two, three more hearings after that with your case, and you didn't come. No, I never had any, any notification of these hearings. Mr. John did not know I had to comply because he said he did not see it. You, you, well, let, let's, get the, let's get that straight, because there were According to my records, uh, you came the first time. Yes, only time. To and we found you in non-compliance, and then the next three times, mm -hmm. you did not show up. There was no other, no other time. Okay. We have signed affidavits that they received. I'm looking for it now. Well, we don't do certified on the subsequent proceedings, but what we would have is return mail if it. Yeah. So if one to verify their address, that's only. Yeah. I think that would be the question. Because the only one that goes certified is the first. And, Correct. And and the five. Yeah. Yes, that's right. The only one that? that goes certified is the first. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? And then they go regular mail. But they come back to me, and then you usually have copies in there that says they came back. To me. Returned. Right. You usually have, I usually have do we envelopes. do we have any of those returns? No, I never received no. any. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think Mr. Jones could speak to the fact that whatever communication would have been towards the need to come into compliance, the documents that were given or for the application would have indicated the requirement for inspections. Sir, but let I, me I, ask I said, you, Mr. Jones could speak. Ever to any me. doubt in your mind that you had to come into compliance? Yes, I did. I what, why would no, you no. have a doubt? What, 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 yeah, you didn't understand. Was there a doubt in your mind that you ever had to come into compliance, that you were not meeting the city's code properly? You were told that, weren't you? Uh, may anybody else uh, rephrase to me? I okay. Do did you always understand from the very beginning that that property was not in compliance. Did you have that understanding? No, I did not. You, d you didn't understand that you weren't in compliance. Is that uh, what you're uh, saying? Uh, okay. No, I can say that. Okay. <laughs> okay. When Mr. John posted on the door, yes. I came here to be in compliance with site pay for the application the same week. But the city made some time mistakes. Mr. John did not see, and by the same frame he, he gave me to be in compliance, the application. 
but it was there when I uh, see, he didn't see it. He did not. But you're, you're under the impression that this is one parcel and it's five units and you work with the state. And Mr. Jones told you that it was not, uh -huh. since it was two buildings, yeah. it needed to fall under the city of Daytona Beach. That, yes, well, that's when we, uh, under 12, we separated. He made me separate. Right. Just so that separated. means you wouldn't come in compliance with the state anymore, that you had to follow the Daytona Beach ordinance. Yeah, I was working with him, but I never received any communication at all. He has to do a visual inspection. I never but in the first, the first meeting that you applied, <clears throat> excuse me, the first meeting that you were here, it said we, we postponed it because we had to figure out if it was falling under the state right. or Daytona. Mm -hmm. That's why you should have come back to the second meeting, which you didn't. And the I'll next one, he I'll asked for another one to be extended to you, and if, you. If I can, if I, if I can, I think. Um, what, what's, what seems to be a little more clear to me is that he went and got applications, uh, which you, you have to pay, pay to, to uh, file. So he paid for the rental application, mm -hmm. and apparently he felt, or at least he's expressing that he yeah. felt, once he paid for the application, he, didn't he was done. That. Right. Yeah. Now, but he's had communication. The documents make it real clear. It's his, really, his responsibility to know what he's okay. supposed to do. And... Um, he, he, they, the, the properties continue to remain occupied throughout this whole process, and it wasn't um, licensed. Uh, Mr., as I said, Mr. Jones could speak to the nature of whatever communication they had. Mr. Jones. When, when Mr. Jones said, I need to do an inspection, I scheduled an inspection with him, which is he did. So I knew what to do. You know, he told me what to do, and I did it. Okay, Mr. So Jones. Over, I have okay, to do. thank you. How many times did you verbally communicate with him? Oh, I would say more than half a dozen, if not more than that. Okay. Um, and some of the confusion when we were here on uh, the 9th, I mean on uh, September 12th, and you continued it, I went down after the meeting with uh, Mr. Piercy and reviewed with the licensing department, they pulled it up and showed that it was a separate parcel. He bought this parcel and the parcel next to it at the same time, mm -hmm. and he was under the understanding right. that they were all one parcel. Right. But we did address deed? that back on September 12th. Was it one deed? What? Was it one deed? Yes, one deed, but two parcels. Two parcels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's in here. And I think that's where the... Uh, Original so that was the original confusion. confusion yes. Mm -hmm. How long a time was it between that confusion was cleared up and everything was taken care of? As well, far as inspection and we then had the first rental inspection. Uh, you, uh, the board issued a fine on January 9th, mm -hmm. and we had a, our first inspection, rental inspection, on January 16th. And at that time, it passed. No, it failed. It had many items. Uh, these were two okay. houses. It had smoke detectors, GFCIs, okay. a lot of issues. Then when did you go back and re-inspect? We re-inspected it on February 14th. So you're inspecting for rentals when it says in the minutes, uh, the affidavit says the property is not and will not be rented. So they decided to change that. Mr. Not Percy sure. said that. Yes. <clears throat> so uh, why did you? It, it states in the minutes that's what you said. Okay. Uh, looking for the date. It's at the top. Okay, it's at the top. January 9th, 2020. You stated that. It was, with an affidavit saying the property is not and will not be rented. I did it. In the minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, when I did this whole say so, where? Who, who? Well, suppose that we to have an group. affidavit. Mm -hmm. That should be on file. When I say that, I think you only won he, only for the first time on the 12th, September 12th. You may be reading the wrong. Mm -mm. I was no. right here. 220, it says, it's under 223 Madison. It's on Mr. the last page. Last page. Yeah. Mr. Jones stated that he asked 
be right. him to sign right. an that's affidavit, what it says. but he did not. That's oh, he did not? Oh, no, right. Mr. Jones asked Mr. him. Mr. Jones asked him. Asked him. Oh, somewhere we, somewhere we should have had a note that he did right. not do that. Right. Um, well, we haven't been back. He hasn't been. He uh, hasn't returned, but. Yeah, he, wa he wasn't here. Right. All right, well, well I, leave, okay. I leave on the one one that I bought, man, and, and uh, I see Well, then, the excuse me, why is your address a Coley? Well, that's, that's where I, I, I receive my, 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 my mail. In Ocoee? Yes. But you live here? Yes, in 223. Uh, I call a question. Yeah. Uh, all right, I think we've heard enough. Uh, a motion that we accept the board's recommendation. All right. Uh, Mrs. Himes has made a motion to accept the board's recommendation of no reduction in the lien. The board's recommendation. The city's recommendation of no reduction. As some, I'm sorry. Is, uh, is there a second to that? Second. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. There is no reduction in the lien. I'm sorry. How is it? Payable in 30 days. And it's payable within 30 days. All right, now we're going to go back and uh, let's see, where are we here? Somebody's been motioning. Uh, we're going to, uh, we need a motion to reconsider lien review number I'll make that three. Motion. A motion that we. Oh, uh, we have a motion from Ms. Roby. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, we'll go back to lien review number three. Okay. And this is CEB 10 19 221. Can you all hear? Better. And what, you live in St. Augustine, Miss Stafford, and you came down here today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Which one is She's it? talking. She's three. It's three. Lean review three. Lean review three. three. CEB 10 19 221. Mr. Jackson. And, okay, we're, we're listing an ownership of Arlene Rogers. And is this Miss Rogers or what's the relationship to the property? Okay. I think it's a cousin. Good question. Um, the niece. A niece. A niece. You're the niece. Okay. Okay. And you have permission to speak for her? Yes. You what? I received the property through her will. Oh, okay. okay. So you're now the owner of the property? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you fully review, and uh, the inspector is Cliff Records on them. Uh, Mr. Recanzon is requesting uh, no reduction, and here's why. He says there were three failed prior re uh, uh, reinspections on the property. He says that it was a fight to get the respondent to bring it into the minimal uh, level of compliance. The property is now in compliance. It originally was um, before this board in September of 2018. It was not until November of 2019 when the board uh, heard it and considered a fine and the fine was imposed. And it was not until February 20th, I mean February 10th of 2020 that the property came into compliance. But do you go over, so it's in compliance February 10th, September that's, of 2018. That's not heavy enough, that's not right. It was first notified. Is that? Uh, uh, the, the numbers don't seem to add up okay. as I'm looking at them. So I'm, I'll ask uh, 
Mr. Reconcile okay. to speak to the time period so we okay. can get some clarity. Okay, let, let, let's hear that. Uh, as I'm, uh, my name is Cliff Reconcile, I'm the inspector uh, on the case. Um, as I'm looking at it right now, the February 10th compliance date, I, I, I don't understand. I, I, it's not working out because my, my final compliance, when I came out to do the compliance for the reinspection for the, for the hearing, uh, on, the, on the 27th, on the 28th, and on the of night, uh, the tw 20, uh, 27th of January, the 28th of January, and on the 19th of February, um, all three of those dates, um, like I, I didn't finally get compliance onto the night, uh, the 19th of February was when I actually got So there compliance. wasn't in compliance February 10th? No. Oh. I'm just asking to see what, how, wouldn't we notice the compliance pursuant to the secretary? Looks like they've moved out. Yeah. I signed it the 17th. But I mean, it could have been a typo. Okay. So yeah, whatever we we provided and, and uh, noted. So so what would that be? What would we in case the respondent that was February nineteenth. Uh, February nineteenth. Twenty twenty. So we have a few days still, and it's it's not substantial. Uh, another 10 days. Uh, it's pretty substantial. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's get this squared away here. This person was notified on the, in September of 2018? Yes. When did we first hear this case? In November of... Uh, 2019. A, more than a year later, it the came first to one, us? October 10th was the right. first. Yeah. That's a year later almost. Yes. Yes. It's a long time. Was there a reason that it was took so long? It was. Um, it was issues on on my part. Um, I. The, the case fell through the cracks for me, and um, when I finally brought it into okay. court. $600. That's when they vote on. <laughs> the case finally was in compliance then on January 27th of 2020, or? No. When? It was February, February 27th. Fe February 19th. February on January 27th, I did an inspection. Okay, okay. On uh, the 28th, I did okay. another inspection. Okay. Is the scrapping business? Yes. Have they moved? It looks vacant. It looks like it's vacant now. Yeah. All right. So let, let us hear from, uh, is this Ms. Stafford? Yes. Okay. But can I ask a question now? Is this figure accurate? The lien figure accurate? No, no that it wouldn't be accurate. It accurate. would be a thousand dollars more than that. Right. Oh, it would actually be more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. You put yeah, nineteen. Uh, nineteen Correct. from the tenth to the nineteenth will be nine hundred dollars more, yeah. more than that. Gotcha. I Thank don't you. Think we should put it up. Uh, we're we're gonna hear. We're gonna give you a chance. Does it matter? I have one more question. Does it matter that the lien review, the owner's name is Arlene Rogers? No, not for me. It, is there? It's actually care of Evelyn Stafford. So that the, takes care of that issue. in the uh, in the application, in the tax roll, and in the tax care roll. Yes. And, and, okay. okay. So, where's so it the, doesn't um, make any. That's not. She's one under oath that she yeah, uh, that's has, fine. has okay. possession on the ship. Okay. I, I do want to just note one thing, uh, if I can, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, and, and uh, from the inspector, and that's that 
Um, he acknowledges that there had been, between that time period of um, uh, the uh, 20, what do we have, the 2018 time period up until January, that it had no one really, uh, no contact from anyone. Mm -hmm. We accept that that's very possible because mm -hmm. of the owner being deceased. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, there was tenants in the place the there whole time, okay. and, uh, but, and nothing was happening in terms of resolving the noncompliance. Okay. Let me ask June just a quick. June, did yeah. I hear you say this is the way it's on the tax roll? Yes. Everything that we've mailed has been care of Evelyn okay. Stafford in St. Okay. Augustine. All right. Now, I'm sorry this took so long, but they're just details that we wanted to get yes. squared away in our minds before we let you talk. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you. What would you like to tell us? I, I uh, was not aware of the condition of the house and what was going on at the time. Uh, I allowed my cousin and his, uh, his wife was ill, and I allowed them to move into the house. About so that's who lived ago. there, your cousin and his wife? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. My cousin and his wife, about, about 10 years ago. Um, everything was going fine, you know, paying the taxes Had a scrapping business. Oh, yeah, I don't want to put words in your mouth. <laughs> Are you okay? Did someone bring you today? Yes, it does. Okay. And he, um, uh, the yard was full of all this scrap metal and junk. It's, it scared me. So when I talked to him about it, I told him he had to clean it up. And apparently he just didn't do it. So. When I found out he didn't do it, I evicted him. I put him out of the house oh. and had the yard clean up. Is anyone living there today? No, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to sell it. So, so you're leaving it vacant. Yes, but it's in compliance now. I mean, there's no more scrap business and stuff oh, in the yard. Yeah, I, okay, okay. Uh, it was awful. It was just so I'm sorry. Sad. It was just, um, what is the city's recommendation? No reduction. No reduction. I did not get any notices. I had no notices from anyone. Are you at P.O. Box 3821? No. That's what you have with the Volusia tax. That's why. I haven't had the post office box for about two years. That's why. Unfortunately, that was still the only information we had in terms of address. Yeah. The mail come back to you? It did Not come back. Actually, no. Okay, but it was also posted. Oh, yeah, it did. It did. It did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the mail it's came there. back. So it came yeah. back. And so as a result of that, the next step pursuant to the statute is posting, which we, the property was posted, yeah, it did. according to the uh, inspector. That would be his testimony. But are you looking for the original yeah. amount in the agenda, or are you looking for the hundred dollars additional? Let's After stick with the original. Yeah. Make we'll it just one life easy. Make a motion to keep the original. Well, we'll just Whatever's in the agenda is for all we're looking for. They were okay. They're going with the agenda. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion. Let me ask you one more question. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you owned this house? Uh, about the, uh, 10 years, 10, 10 years? Yes. Okay. How long were the cousins in there? 
Oh, okay. She passed. Okay. okay. And uh, we kept it up and for you know, five and, years. Mm-hmm. Apparently. Mm-hmm. He didn't do it, you know. Did they notify you that they were, uh, that you had messages on the, uh, posted on your door, on the door? Oh, no, I, had, I didn't receive anything. So how did you receive mail this time? I didn't, I came up here. Why did you come up here if you weren't receiving any notices? I had my brother to come up because he had not paid the taxes for the month, for the year. And I came up here because he hadn't paid the taxes. Who hadn't paid the taxes? My cousin, because I let them stay in the house and they would pay the taxes and keep the house up. They didn't have to pay the I get, I, okay, I understand. But... But I think what she's asking is, how did you get notification to be here today? Oh, from the rental person sent it to me. What rental the person? Place, the people I mean, she uh, got. The, the person I'm selling it to. I'm selling the house to. Do you have this address here? Mr. Freeman? <coughs> yes. He sent these to me from Dade City. Sent me seven copies. I have a question, if I may. Uh, I can't see you from here. Uh, ma'am. Uh, He's you, right here. Yeah, hi. Uh, earlier the question came up about rental, and you said it wasn't rented. But then you came back to rental, and then, but I'm selling it. So no. I need a clarification. No. Okay. Go ahead. Tell them again. That you tell them what you told me before about is it vacant now? It's vacant now. Yeah. So after it's so you kicked, he, she kicked out the cousin was my okay. understanding. Right. Correct. Okay. And then, so I could get it cleaned up. Right. Yeah. Okay. And the person who received that notification, so that who is that person? The person buying the house. Yeah, right. Investor. When, when was that, when, is the house sold yet? No. Someone's it's made, not, it's not sold yet. Someone made an offer? Yes. You accepted the offer? Yes. You haven't closed yet? No, I'm closed. Okay. Right. That's why they're here, obviously, because they want to get a reduction. Right. And lean. Okay. So that person that you're selling the house to found out that you had all this lean stuff and that's how you got the notices. Yes. Okay, I'm, I get it. Okay, shall we move on? Right. Yeah. I had a motion. What? Mr. Gonzalez. You have a motion, Mr. Gonzalez? Uh, yes, I have a motion because uh, it seems to me that there's some confusion between what transpired uh, from her inheritance and confusion with the city numbers uh, and the city dates. So I would make a motion that we make an adjustment in the fine to $4,000, which is half of what? So, all right, there's a motion on the floor from Mr. Gonzalez. Is there a second to that motion? He had something to say. Cool. Okay. Right Go ahead. Just a point of clarity, the confusion in the dates is an error in favor of Correct. the individual. Right, they're in favor. It's not favor. something that was Probably held against then. them. Right. Yeah. We asked them. So would you still like to make that motion? Uh, yeah, because I still see some confusion in the presentation. So I would still mo uh, carry my motion of... Um, Dropping the fine to four thousand dollars. All right, we have a motion from Mr. Gonzalez to reduce the amount of the fine to four thousand dollars. Is there a second? Second. Second from Mr. Harrington. All in favor, say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Roll call vote. Roll call, please. Mr. Gonzalez. Aye. Ms. Roby. No. Ms. McLean. I'm not voting. Are you? You have to I, vote. I'm I have sorry. to vote. Yes. Uh, I guess yes. I, 
yes, you vote to reduce it? Yeah, I guess. Mr. Harrington? Yes. Ms. Himes? Yes. Ms. Kundig? <laughs> no. 3 2. I can't, can't be three two. two. No, can't be three two. Who'd I miss? I got four to two. I got four, four two. two. Four two. Four two. You're right. Yes. So motion passes. passes. The yep. fine is reduced to four thousand dollars, payable in thirty days. No. Thank you. That was no. Who were the no's? Me. One no. I was the yes. I am. You were yes. Miss Kundig. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I just saw. Uh, no. no, she voted, no. yeah. Oh, no, it's just the two of us. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to excuse myself. Let's okay, we still... What? what All right, Mr. Herring is excused. We're going to move on. Thank We're you. finished with our lean reviews. We're going to move on to our new cases. Or our old cases, I'm sorry, continued cases. We have a quorum, so we're going to just start. Case number one, CEB 02-20-15, Audrey Brock's. Okay. Mr. Jackson. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of, uh, for the imposition of a fine. The inspector is John Stinson. Mr. Stinson reports that the property remains in noncompliance, but he's asking that we amend to the next cutoff. He says that they are working on it. The only thing, they still have some things remaining regarding the roof, and he believes that they can be in compliance by next cutoff. Turn to Mr. Stinson if you have any factual questions. Uh, Mr. Stenson, someone living there? Uh, good morning, John Stenson, code inspector with the city. Um, at this point right now, I don't know. Um, last week, there were probably about four to six cars parked haphazardly across the property. Uh, just recently, last few days, the cars have not been there. That's about all the information I can give you on that. The person that owns the house is from Texas? Yes. Do you speak to her in, is that, you call I, her, when you talk to her, you're calling Texas? I had first contact with her uh, about 10 days ago. That was the first time you've had contact with her? Yes. And it, do you believe it's since the time you had contact with her that she actually is, the cars disappeared and she's actually working on it? That's correct. So from October until March 1st, basically, there was no, no movement at all. Correct. Hey, there's your timeline. Uh, what is the city's recommendation? Uh, we would like to amend to the next cutoff amend since there's the actually some movement happening now. Okay. Hey, I'd like to make a motion that we grant the one more month. All right. We have a motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance and allow respondent until 4 1 2020 to come into compliance and be returned for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 a day. Uh, motion was Mrs. Roby who made the second? I did. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case two and three are in compliance, mm -hmm. so we'll go move on to yes. case four, CEB 02-20-19. Demond and Nakeith Radin. Anyone present? Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mark Jones. Um, Mr. Jones reports that this property remains in non-compliance. He's requesting a fine be imposed of $100 per day to a maximum of $15,000. He's had no contact from the owner and the property is occupied. Okay. I attend to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones? 
Yes. The property is rented, it's rental property? Yes, it's a rental property, and I've uh, had no contact from the owner. None, okay. Does the owner Any live, contact? live here? I don't, let me just. Uh, now that, that's something I would have in my red book. I don't have that in front okay. of me. That's Do right. you have, have had a, any contact with the renters? I ended up having to post the property. No, no one came to the door. Okay. Is there somebody living there? You don't know. No. Yes, there's definitely living people there. living there because different times I've been there. There's been different cars in the uh, driveway. Okay. Yeah, property's been posted. Okay. Any so, discussion? Uh, no, I'd like to make a motion, Madam Chair, uh, that we accept the city's recommendations of $100 a day to $15,000 All right, we have a motion on the floor from Mr. Gonzalez. Do we have a second to that motion? Second. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Effective date? Today. Effective today. today. Okay. Thank you. March 12th, 2020. Thank you. All right, case number five. CEB 09-19-173, Gemma Vasquez. State your name and address, please. Nancy Haney, uh, 402 Seabreeze Boulevard, Daytona Beach, 32118. Steve Haney, 402 Seabreeze, Daytona Beach. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Let us hear from Mr. Jackson first. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that the property uh, remains in noncompliance. They failed a rental inspection on November 19th of 2019, or November of 2019. Um, the property is occupied up until yesterday. It had not been rescheduled. Uh, it's still not rescheduled, but they did contact Mr. Jones via email on yesterday. Uh, seeking to reschedule. So uh, the recommendation, the request, from Mr. Jones, is a hundred dollar fine to a maximum of fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. Um, I thought I read or heard <coughs> that it was vacant. Is that? Am I misremembering? I'm it mis was during the period, it, during different times. It was uh, occupied uh, when we did the inspection. On, um, in, in November of 2019, in November. it was yes. occupied. I have it as the property is unoccupied at this time. I don't know if that's the case. Um, no, Go there ahead. is someone in there. There is someone in there? All of the um, repairs have been made, and I did reach out to Mr. Jones yesterday by email to schedule the inspection, so we're working on scheduling the final inspection. What was left to be done? Mr. Jones. Well, it was the list. Okay. What was left to be done? There was quite a large item. There was interior finishes. We had problems with windows, screens, GFCI, smoke detectors, mm -hmm. uh, faucets leaking, needing a deadbolt. Uh, it was quite a long list of items. Okay. okay. What? It, so everything's done now and you have set up a time? Everything is done. We have not set up a time. But you can do that today? Well, they notified me uh, yesterday morning via email that they were finally ready for the reinspection. Okay. How long? And how long has the tenants been in the house? Um, they just moved in March first. Okay, and you didn't think it was necessary to have it inspected before you rented it, since this was an ongoing issue since well, November. Well, didn't, I didn't want to schedule the inspection when all the work hadn't been done yet. Um, so you rented it before the work was completed. No, yes, yes. <laughs> most of the work was done. It's just, we had, it was safe to live there. We just had um, some windows that needed to be replaced, and they take time to get glass doctor out there and get the estimate over the glass, so it takes time to get things scheduled. But, yeah. Well, I'd like to make a motion that we impose a fine of $100 a day till the inspection can be done. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Roby. Uh, and that's up to, for $100 a day fine, up to $15,000 starting today. And a second from Mr. Gonzalez. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. 
Case number six is in compliance. Case number seven, CEB 02-20-20. 15. Sean Hughes. Hughes. Mr. Hughes here? No, so. Showed last time, okay? Yes. Uh, okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that the property remains in noncompliance. Uh, it failed um, to uh, it failed inspection on um, February of 2020 uh, or February 20th of 2020, right. and um, uh, now they have until March 20th based on a the uh, process for uh, uh, repairing, making the repairs from that failed inspection. So Mr. Jones is asking that we amend to the next cutoff to allow them not the opportunity to make the repairs from the prior inspection. Okay. Um, Mr. Jones, is there a lot left to do? Uh, there was not a, a lot of items, but the property, it's a two unit and they're both unoccupied. I have talked with the owner, well, the owner's mother and uh, who did the inspection with me, and they will not run it until they pass their inspection. Very good. Okay. good. So the property's unoccupied. It's unoccupied at this time, yes. Okay. Uh, so, well, okay. Chair Owen came motion to amend the previous order of noncompliance law respondent until 4 1 2020 to commit to compliance and return to a subsequent meeting for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day until compliance is achieved. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign, opposed. Motion carries. Case number eight, CB 02 22 Zaydul Hulk and Farana Akhtar. Anyone here? Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mark Jones. Mr. Jones reports that this property remains in noncompliance. Um, it has three occupied units. Uh, it failed inspection on January the 22nd. Um, I, I mean, it failed the three inspection on January 22nd and also on February 27th. Um, and so Mr. Jones is asking for a $100 per day fine to a maximum of $15,000. I will attend to Mr. Jones. Okay. Uh, the property is occupied, Mr. Jones, still? Yes, all three units. All three units are occupied. Uh, long list left to be done? Yes, it was a long list on January when we did right. the first inspection. And when I went back, there were still quite a few items that hadn't been completed. Right. Uh, outside storage and trash, and we had some GFCIs and some other electrical issues. And then we had a uh, motor home that showed up on the property that's unlicensed that was parked on the grass. Okay, and no, still no communication from them? I've been talking, to, not with the owner. Right. Uh, they're using a property management firm who says the owner does all the repairs. Okay, uh, yeah, fine. Uh, Okay, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to impose a fine of $100 per day against the respondent effective today, March 12th, 2020, and continue until compliance is achieved reaches a maximum of $15,000. So, so the motion. Moved. So Mr. Moved. Mr. Uh, Gonzalez made the motion. Uh, Ms. Himes, the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number nine, CB 0220 33, Jackson Trust. I, I don't, they, they weren't here before. We haven't had contact. And it continues. Okay. Ma yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspectors, Mike Fitzgerald, Mr. Fitzgerald reports that the circumstance remains the same. This, he has had no contact from the respondent, they've done nothing. He's asking for $100 per day fine to a maximum of $20,000. Attend to Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, let, me, let me ask Mr. Jackson a question. Um, why is this up to $20,000 and the others are fifteen? This is a commercial property. How many units in this? Uh, if I'll... Look to uh, Mr. Fitzgerald. Okay. 
Go ahead, Mr. Fitzgerald. It says a five-unit apartment building. Okay. Okay. Got it. So nothing's been. Nothing. No okay. Nothing. Okay. Chair, I'll entertain motion to propose a fine of a hundred dollars per day. So bold. All right. Mo uh, <laughs> <laughs> gets the respondent effective today, March 12, 2020, and continues until compliance is achieved and reaches a maximum of twenty thousand uh, dollars. Ms. Himes made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Ma second. <coughs> Mr. Gonzalez. All in favor, say aye. 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 Like, sign, opposed. Motion carries. Case number ten, CEB. 02-20-30, John Sharper, at Al. Mr. Sharper, any Sharpers here? Okay. <laughs> and you were here last time. That's good. Here twice. State your name and address, please. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please speak it louder into the microphone. Thank you. <coughs> All right, just wait one second, and we'll hear from Code first. Mr. Jackson. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector in this case is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald uh, reports that the, uh, you had a dual order, the issue of securing mm -hmm. the uh, um, facility has been taken care of. However, it remains in non-compliance. Nothing else has been done. Uh, this has been since July of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, Ms. Fitzgerald is asking for a $200 day fine to a maximum of $15,000. He does understand that it was, uh, it's, it's their property. Um, but nevertheless, that's the status. He understands what? No, I was saying, it, it was air property, so he was thinking maybe 10, but it, 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 it never, it's, it's, the status okay. is that it's air property. Okay. So has it been, has it been approved for demo? I had, um... Well, you, te you tell us what you want us to know. <laughs> okay. I've had the house folded up and you no trespassing sign. Finally they're gone. And, um, uh, I have to depend upon my daughter Milton in Jacksonville. Where, where do you to live, sir? Me. Where do you live, sir? I live in Ocala. She lives in Jacksonville. She has to transport me, so I can't drive. And I had uh, someone to uh, finish up the work yesterday on the house as far as uh, the roof and the yard and all of that stuff. That was, uh, that was completed yesterday, so I'm, I'm sure Mr. Perdell, this Gerald doesn't. Uh, so you perfect. had the roof damage fixed yesterday? It passed up. It, it can't be damaged. This problem with the house itself is probably going to have to be demolished. Okay. It's been vacant for about three years now. All right, now there's something about this house being in probate. Is it out of probate now? No, it doesn't. That, that would take about five months. And, well, that's what you said last time, so, right. um, so, so it should be four months now. Months ago, right. yes. So it's not going to be out of probate until four months. What is that meaning to us? Anything? It will mean that they can't take any action. Yeah. Close the case. We can't take action. No, we can take action. Okay. He, he, oh, uh, we can take action. Right. I think what, what uh, Mr. Sino is saying is he won't be able to follow through with a demolition without the authorization of the court if it's an a, a, um, a active uh, probate proceeding. Well, $200 a day for four months is more than probably the house's. Well, that's just, that has a limit of 15000 on it. Yeah. But if he can't mm -hmm. do anything right. to it right. until it's in Correct. probate, mm -hmm. why pile on? Right. Do you have yeah. any papers that show that it's in probate? Can we see yeah. that on public yeah. records anywhere? This can last uh, time I appeared here. I had papers out of this world. I didn't use any of them. Oh. I didn't bring any of them. 
<laughs> one more month. We'll continue it for one more month, and then you can come bring your papers back so that we can see that it's in program. Well, June, do you have papers from last what, time? I don't know what I have. Oh, I didn't turn any of them in. No. Did, you didn't turn okay. any of them in? I just had a look. Can, right. Yeah. Get a case number and style, but we're not going to give any. I, I see that, uh, Captain Lee, and I'm going to check. And I, I believe they probably can pick up, a, you, you know, just the proof of a case existence, but they're not going to be able to get any case information. Well, we don't need case. Yeah, I, I mean, just, we just want to know it exists. I understand. Are you the executor of the estate? He's the only one left. He's the only one left. You're the executor of the estate? Yes, no, Captain. I'm the only administrator. administrator. He's the only one left. He's the only one left. So what's that mean? That means he is probably. He's the executor. Yeah, it's not automatic. <laughs> I mean, is there an attorney involved with the case? I've had several attorneys in the past since I've uh, taken over the responsibilities working on different issues. But um, right now, I'm at the point where I want to just sell the house as is. Well, that's not quite what we're asking. Yeah, Go ahead, Mr. Jack. Yeah, is something actually filed with the court already? Yeah. As far as uh, asking the court to yeah. make some decision regarding the property? No. No. No, there's no probate. So, so there is no probate. probate. Okay. Not yet. Okay. So no, why don't we go ahead, we'll go ahead and, do, and do a fine? Okay. Okay. Uh, that's what, and the recommendation of the city is two hundred dollars a day, up to fifteen. I'll tell you another thing. The guilty um, fine is beyond reasonable to me. You can have the house and everything that goes with it. <laughs> that is the city's recommendation. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm uh, rough too because. There are six other siblings involved in this house besides myself. I thought I, I thought, thought that you were they, didn't you say you were the only me. and I'm only part only responsible for that one self. And I just Okay, now we're confused again. Because no. I was under the impression the house has never gone into probate from any of the people that have passed. Right. right. They're estates. They're estates only. Right. Can I just interject here for just yes. a second? So Really, I understand that you might want to relinquish the property or dispose of it if there's a fine, but the, the, the big issue for you is probate. If you haven't gone through that process, you don't have the authority or ability to do that. So we wouldn't even be able to assist you as a city in that process either. So you just you need to seek probate, and the board just needs to make a decision about what they want to do today. That's really where we're at. Is that, Tony, is that the best... <laughs> I didn't hear everything you said, but I, I mean, I, but I did. On the last thing he said, just a, a little clarification, I think uh, Mr. Cena would agree. It sounds like this, this person died without a will. So right. I think what he's saying is that, that they have all this divided interest, and it continues. Mm -hmm. So and he's it not the sole. And whether the people that are on this are living or not living. Well, it matters to the state. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. So if they have children, then yeah. they right. have. Right. So it's, it still may yeah. have some things, uh, other right. folks that no, may the, be. The, 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 nothing to stop issue. us from doing what we're going to do is impose a fine. Exactly. Okay. We can still impose a fine. Okay. And whatever they're going right. to do, whether right. sell or whatever, he's probably going to, if there's people existing, he's going to have to get that resolved with right. sign offs or something else right. to get it all taken care okay. of. Okay. And it's, it's probably no more. All right. Well, Mr. Roby, you still uh, want to entertain a motion to impose a fine of $200? I'd like to make a, to impose a fine of $100 a day. $100 a day. All right. Mr. Roby has made a motion to impose a fine of $100 a day up to $15,000 starting today. And Ms. Himes has seconded it. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Nay. Uh, motion carries uh, five to one. Okay. Thank you. Case number 11. CEB 02-20-31, Lewis Henry. Junior, Chrissy Ferguson, Tracy Ferguson, Stephen Wayne. Ferguson. 
Madam Chair, members of the board. Oh, here's someone. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> it's not <laughs> white. State your name and address, please. Steve Ferguson, 861 White Court. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Jackson. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald uh, reports that the property remains in uh, noncompliance. Um, and I would, um, he's asking for a fine of $200 per day to a maximum of $10,000. I believe there may be a couple of things done, but nothing close to enough to uh, move towards compliance. And I'll let Mr. Uh, Fitzgerald speak to that. Okay, uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, what's left to be done? It looks like, I, are all these pictures the same day? Yes, <coughs> 311. 311. Yesterday. What's been done exactly? Uh, the only thing that's been done that I've seen is the electrical has been repaired by an electrician and the, uh, by a licensed electrician. And I got the uh, receipt from that. The property is still in noncompliance for everything else. There was a tree issue too that isn't on here. It was a dead tree. That tree right there, it's gone now. I'm sorry, the tree is Trees gone. Are down, living room's painted, kitchen's painted, kitchen's under construction right now. Good, redoing the cabinets. Noncompliance for tiles. Where tiles been taken up, the dent set's still on the ground. How's that not compliant? I thought it was supposed to be safety issues. There's nothing safe the other than I do need four more smoke detectors. Yards clean, a dirty fence, dirty vinyl signing, that's a violation. Yes. Houses get dirty. Uh, uh, Mr. Ferguson, let me ask you a question. Um, does anyone live there? I do. You're the only person that lives there? Me and I have a roommate. You and a roommate, okay. I'm doing, I'm doing the best I can to renovate this place so we can sell it. How long have you lived there? Uh, about 10 years. But recently I've been able to take it over to my grandmother who just passed. Who, who was your grandmother? Dolores. That, Dolores. Who was Lewis Henry? That's my uncle. And who was Chrissy? Chrissy, my sister. He lives in Kentucky, she lives in Ormond. I'm Whatever. not going to do anything with it. Uh, but you own the house as well. You're an owner. Right. And how long have you owned, did you say? Well, I haven't. It just now got out of probate. We just now got out of the court from my grandmother when she passed. And when was that? 2015. It was when she passed, but it was in probate for like two years. So you've owned it for how long? Since I've, 2017? Like since 17, yes. Does he own it? I'm not really the holy owner. You're not the only owner. Right. 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 It's left to my uncle and my sister on the will to get, when we sell it, we get a percentage of it. Not only one working on it, trying right. to get it ready to sell. Right. I feel like I'm getting picked on here. Then set on, on a trousel, stick down tiles, saying, you know, how, how's any of that violation? Dirty vital signing? A dirty fence? I mean, come on. How's well, that because the city has codes and standards, that's how it's a violation. Sure, people show a new picture of it, the house does not look dirty. Does it? It looks, I, I see improvement. What was the dorm living, sir? That, that's old, old picture. So I'm asking what the pictures are, when they were. I mean, dirt. That, I'm putting new cabinets in. I just like to use the kitchen right now. I'm trying to say that. Okay, I need to have, okay. So you, I'm doing the best I can with no income by myself. I, uh -huh. What was the dorm living? That picture was yesterday. What, that picture was yesterday? Yes, ma'am. Where are your new cabinets? I'm, I'm waiting on them. Oh, to you're waiting them. on them. Okay. Right, right. Oh. Saying, that's all, every, all these pictures he's got me on is work in process. Like all the original ones was work in process. Okay. Can I ask you what the dorm living was? There really was no dorm living. I had people over. That was over a year ago. It may have been over a year ago. Yeah. You had people over for the day? 
For the night, you had a party right. what? For the night. Right. One night? Well, they, when they showed up, they just had a party that night before. Huh. There's no dorm living. I, I so no one's, who's living there now? You and a roommate, period? Right, and I'm taking care of a handicapped lady right now. So, and she lives there too? Right. Well, you gotta get your story straight. I gotta ask this. Well, I ain't got to that part yet. He saw her yesterday too, she's got one leg. What? I'm sorry, I, you know, that is not the issue. The issue is I asked you who was living there. Me and two people. You and two other people. Right. You and me. So, is that considered dorm living now? No, not anymore, is it? Anymore. Not okay. anymore. No, it's not dorm living. So that issue, dorm living, is taken care of. Okay. So, so, so out of all of these things on this list, the dead tree has been taken care of, the electrical hazard's been taken care of. What else has been taken care of? The lawn's clean in the front. Nothing else. Car, I, lawn car maintenance? Cars are gone. The, pool? the cars the are gone. Better. The pool was empty. All right, look, what's up? Dirt and grime and mold paint. Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Fitzgerald, Inspector Fitzgerald, can you run through the list that's on the sheet there and tell them yeah, what please. is not Tell completed. me what needs sure. to be done. Dirt please. and grime mold, peeling paint, um, fading paint. Uh, the dead tree is gone. The, uh, the no ground cover is still there. The lawn maintenance has been mowed. Broken brick planter box, still broken. The interior and exterior electrical hazards have been repaired. Exterior doors, broken trim, the doors are the same. Interior surfaces damaged are all still broken. The non-working and missing smoke detectors are still missing. Dorm living has been repaired because of the code change. The damaged exterior fencing is still there. The outside storage trash and debris all over the backyard, still there. Dilapidated pool and standing water, the dilapidated pool is still there. Non-working fireplace, uh, junk vehicles have been removed. Parking on the grass has been repaired. The missing address numbers have been repaired. Damaged interior doors are still. Okay, what thank you. Pool? Is it secure? Pardon me? Pools? Is the pool secure? The pool is secure, it's fenced the in, fence. but it's in, it's, yeah. And it's okay, thank you. No standing water, that means. No okay. Water. Yeah, okay, I get it. All right, now. And the doors have been changed. Brand new door off my back room. Hinges have been reversed. What do you mean by a non-working fireplace? It, it has damage on it. So I, I, it wasn't, it, and it had, it had a bed in front of it. So I asked if it was working, and they said no. Fireplace works. The grid's on top of it. I got a window unit. What, wait. There's nothing wrong with that fireplace. I, I don't understand what the issue was with the fireplace. Uh, um, there were some cracks in the, in the mortar. Okay. Interior surface cracks, yeah. Okay. All right, now, you were first notified on the 22nd of May. We're coming up close to a year. Cut the grass, removed a tree, had somebody do some electrical work took some water out of the pool, moved some cars. Cleaned That's up, it? In the almost house. a year? You cleaned up the inside of the house, it's getting painted, trying to get some roof work done. I'm doing a lot of things on my own. The fence he's talking about, I'm missing two panels between mine and my back, my neighbor lives behind me. And he's also telling me I can't have the two fences I have there. One's a vinyl fence, one's a chain link fence. Yes. The chain link, the vinyl one's for privacy. And yes, it's been over a year, so yes, the house needs to be pressure cleaned again. I mean, it's like... The, the what? The house does need to be fresh and clean, but that's been over a year ago since the last time he saw it. So, yeah, it's going to be dirty. It's white vinyl. It looks better than 90% of the houses on my street. I just feel like I'm getting picked on here. I don't think so. Um, it doesn't appear that there, way to me there. with all this work, and it's been a year, almost. It's so, been 10 months at least. So. The doors have been repaired. Okay. Doors have been all right, been that's, <laughs> that's enough. Madam right. Chair, can I get some clarification yes, as to... What is the city's recommendation? Two hundred ten thousand. Yeah, two hundred. Two hundred. About two hundred and fifty dollars a day to a maximum of fifteen thousand. 
I would I like to make a motion. Oh, Can I have right. a Can question? Sure. Oh, the, two, the two people that live with you, do they 10, kick 000. in to help for the bills and the pay yeah, and all matter. of that? Well, I thought there were three owners and two out. Yes, they're up. That's why they're there to help me pay some bills right now. Okay. Make I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead, Mr. Gonzalez. That we uh, accept the city's recommendation, except for 50, make it 200 a day up to 15,000. Uh, All right, we have a motion to impose fine of $200 per day up to 15,000. Madam Chair, I'm sorry if I can interrupt. The, uh, it should be 10,000. It That's is on the Okay, okay 10,000. For the maximum. Second. I'm just asking if I can possibly. We have a motion to impose a fine of $200 per day up to $10,000 effective today and continue until compliance is achieved. We have a motion from Mr. Gonzalez and a second from Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Is no possible way I can get 30 days? What? Is no possible way I can get 30 days to get the rest of it completed? I'm doing the best I can by myself. I'm sorry. The decision's been made, so. You're, I mean, you guys are done, correct? I'm sorry. Okay, that, yes. that's okay. Um, I didn't quite understand the question. We've made a decision to fine you. What is your? What did you say to that? If I could possibly get a dirty day. No, we've made the decision. You can't. All right. Okay, thank you. All right, let's do now case number 12, CEB 12-19-299. William Brown and Lucy Denault. Actually, the, and the, the old owner was Richard Waters, but these two people are the new owners, correct? Okay. You are Mr. Brown. Please get sworn in. Okay. State your name, please. William Brown. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we'll hear from uh, Mr. Jackson first. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that they're working on it and they're doing a really good job. It looks like that they're, his opinion is that they are working, moving forward in good faith. He'll like to amend to the May cutoff and um, he believes that they'll have it done. Okay, so we have given, the, given you two months before, but you think it will take Mr. Fitzgerald another two months because they're doing it the right way, or what? Yeah, exactly. If okay. you'll see, they put scaffolding all over the building. They're, they're, they're really uh, <laughs> going to make it look really nice. The windows are looking really good, so, yes. Okay. Is that a uh, multi-year structure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's not mm -hmm. rented? No, not this time. Seems like a pretty reasonable amount of time to me, <clears throat> because they've yeah. done they've done a lot, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that was shades. All the electric shades. Okay. What else is done? Michael Kane, uh, new soffit all the way around the building. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a violation. It was cracked. Mm -hmm. It was stuck and it was very difficult to remove. Mm -hmm. I did most of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what else did we do? Oh, so much. New garage doors mm -hmm. on the garage, four mm -hmm. car garage, three new doors, uh, landscaping a little bit, clean it up. But, yeah. uh, well, a new laundry room, all the insides done, all Good. the electric, Good. floor, new uh, washer dryer. It, it just so okay. much. All right. Okay. It. But you're working hard on it, oh, so yes. that's. All right, uh, the city's recommended that we amend the previous uh, order of noncompliance and allow respondent until May 6, 2020 to come into compliance and return to a subsequent meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 a day. Is there oh, such please. a motion? Mr. Harrington made the motion a second. 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 Times, all in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed, motion carries. Thank you very much. And now we'll move on to case 13. CEB 0220-25, Deborah Wilkinson. Mm -hmm. 
Good morning. State your name and address. Debbie Green, 534 Live Oak Avenue. Where do you live? 534 Live Oak Avenue is the address. Okay. Oh, you live there. Okay. No, I don't live there. That's Where the do you yeah. live? I live in Ormond Beach. <laughs> okay. And how are you related to Deborah Wilkinson or Mr. Quinons? I, I am Debbie Wilkinson. Wilkerson was my married name when I purchased the house at the time. Back okay. Umpteen years ago. So you are the same person. Okay. I am the same individual, okay. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Madam, Jackson. Yes. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector is Sarah Kirk. Ms. Kirk reports the property remains in noncompliance. This has been since April of 2019. The, um, there's been no change since the last hearing. And so she's asking for $100 per day fine be imposed to a maximum of $15,000. I tend to Ms. Kirk. Has Ms. Green been in touch with you? Uh, Sarah Kirk, inspector with the city. Uh, initially, when I uh, first had this case uh, started back in April of 19, uh, there was some contact. And then in May, uh, the home was burglarized. Uh, tools and materials were stolen. And uh, so I did extend more time. And then after that, there was no work being done. So it just uh, sat there. Uh, so, and then I didn't have any contact until the last hearing. Okay. All right. Uh, when Mr. Quinon, who's me? Who, who was that? He was my, he's my ex. Okay. He came last time? Yes. He had to work today. He couldn't get there. Okay. okay. And he says that there was a contract to sell the house? Yes. In fact, that day when we got done here, we were heading over to the house to meet um, Home Solution Investments, some investors. Uh -huh. We signed a contract. Um, they set up a contractor to come and expect the property to on the 19th. The contractor never showed up. So I kept in contact with the investors trying to figure out what was going on. The 26th, he contacted me again and said they wanted to reschedule. That contractor bailed on them, so they had to find a new one. And so. Yeah, oh well. Mm -hmm. And so. so they wanted to reschedule. So I tried to reschedule, kept contacting them. So you don't actually have. I had a contract with them. You had. I did. And then, and then I, like I said, I kept trying to contact yeah, them. But that, Finally, do you have one now? I do from another group. In fact, the contractor was here with me this morning to speak on behalf, to let you know that they're working on it. I contacted her on the second and the third, um, left voicemails on both phone numbers that I had for her. I also contacted the investors that I had this contract because we were supposed to close on the fifth. And I was like, look, I'm supposed to be reporting back to the city. I only have until the fourth. I need to know what's going on. He contacted me on the fifth and said that they wouldn't be able to move forward because of the amount of work that needed okay. to be done. So I got on the phone, tried to find the other investors that contacted me in the last 30 days, mm -hmm. found another one. I've been working with them now. It's Alpine Trust and Properties. I met with the contractor on Tuesday. In fact, like I said, he was here with but me, but just he, he had to leave. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and um, But they promised that if we can move forward, no fines for another 30 days, we should close. They have closing date for April the 6th, but she's looking like it's the cash only that they're doing. They don't have to do financing like the other people had to. So Is there any reason that the house looks like this in the front? All the garbage and trash? Yeah, all the garbage and trash. Oh, that's gone. That was gone when all this started at the beginning. That, that is an older picture. Uh, there are current pictures actually from yesterday on there. Okay. Um, 
Tell us what's current. Okay, you can't really see the date. It's at the very that one's no, more February. That's more. actually 2020. You can see that's that. There you go. Yeah. yeah. This one now. And the front's been re that's been taken care of. I mean, compared to what the older pictures were. Four six. So we did do some work, but it just got to the point that it stopped in May. I just want to sell it. I just want to get rid of it, and I don't want to have to deal with it. I just it. the work kind of stopped in May. The work so stopped. It's, in it's May. been the same since May. Because that's when I decided I just want to get rid of it, and it took us time to find someone for people to try and buy it. Do you have? A contract yet? You don't have a contract. I do have a contract. You just got it closing for four I six. Have, I couldn't print it out because I rearranged my house, but I do have it in my email that it is a complete contract. The contract is subject to inspection. No, it's a done contract. It's, it's a, a cash deal, deal. No. as long as there's no fines at it. Correct. Correct. So, I, I'd like to make a motion to give her till the April cutoff to come into compliance and then I even talked to him and I said look I you just said when, when you go to closing on the 6th you need to contact Miss Kirk okay because that's yes their goal is to do it before April 1st okay that that's our that's our goal that because the meeting is I mean it, it has to be done by April 1st the meetings the 9th okay so you can tell them that, and we'll give you that time. And I mm -hmm. stressed to them and said, look, I don't want to end up at the last hour, and then you guys bail on me again. And she said, no, they, they don't, they're not going to do that. They, they understand the situation. They understand the circumstances. They understand the property. They've got other properties that they've been buying up around. Yeah, the well, yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll see well, how that works. Yeah. yeah, I know. But you will, you will probably be fine next time if this doesn't go through. Do they give you a deposit when they make those yeah. kind of deals? They don't give me a deposit. They put a good faith uh, $500 deposit with it. Well, that's what I meant, yeah. yeah. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, we had a gentleman that came before us mm -hmm. who said, well, I'll give you the house. You know, take it over. He's she got said, probate issues. But, well, I know that. That but she, excuse, excuse me, ma'am. She's saying, I just want to get rid of the house. So we're still with the same problem. No, the house is just in her name. That's not what I'm saying. She's saying, I just want to get rid of the house. Mm -hmm. I want to sell it. Same thing that the other gentleman was saying. I just want to get rid of the house. Yes, they, so, I agree that they are saying the same thing. The difference is that... Uh, this person is saying they have a contract. We're giving them 30 days. What's been suggested right. is that we give her 30 days to ha make that but come we, true. We, if she has to come back again, it would be yeah. my feeling that then we would fine her. Right. The other issue was that there was no contract, no anything, nothing was being done, and we weren't exactly being told well, I don't want to discuss that. Well, yeah. Yeah. well yeah. I think the situation is This yeah. case was before us last month, and the same issue that, that is, was that presented is since April. In, right, in regards to contract, right. contract, contract, still no contract. Okay. So the I went on the other All right. I'm, okay. Excuse me. The question is do we take it in good faith yeah. that she's going to do it, or, or do we not? Correct. And right. um, so. Um, Ms. Roby has made a motion that we amend our previous order till next month. Is there a second to that? Second. Yeah, second, Ms. Mr. Harrington. No, second, Ms. Hines. Ms. Hines. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Let's vote on that one and see what happens with that. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Likes, what? Like right. sign opposed. Opposed. Yeah. Okay. So the and we're missing two, three, four. Four, four, to four to one. She four to one approved. Okay. Four to four one. To one. It passes. Yes. Okay. So you have till next month to get no, a done I deal. Because in good faith as well, I went with Home Solutions thinking, you know, well, they would follow through with it. Got a month. They bailed on me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. 
Case number 14, CEV 0220-27, John Sanders. Mr. Sanders here. We'll hear this case and then we'll have to take a break for 10 minutes and please let me suggest that if you are leaving the room that before you come back in you use the hand sanitizers. Uh, all right, and uh, please be sworn in. State your name, please. Do it. Good morning, Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Raise your right hand. Oh, okay. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Hey, Mr. Jackson. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, this is before you for parking on the grass, trash and debris. Uh, the inspector, Sarah Kirk, is for imposition of a fine. Ms. Kirk says he's made progress, he's making progress. She'd like to mend so he can get it done to the next cutoff. So, well, what needs to be done, sir, in your opinion? Well, I, I'm sorry, let me ask Sarah, what, Ms. Kirk what needs to be done first. Okay, uh, he did move the vehicles. Uh, I think Good. there was a misunderstanding uh, with Mr. Sanders, um, I told him no vehicles parked on the grass, so he actually removed the grass. So I th there was a little bit of a misunderstanding. So um, that's why I would like to amend. So I went over uh, with him today with the pictures. Uh, there are, he put a couple new things on the property. Um, if you could do the next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Okay, that's okay. Uh, you know what, I took the picture this morning on the way because he was working on it yesterday. Uh, so the two vehicles are gone, but now there's uh, some other stuff in the back and, I, and the uh, grills are still there. So, uh, so I explained to him everything has to be cleared completely. But he did move the vehicle. And I cut and you what? Yeah. Right, he did remove the grass because I said no uh, vehicles on the grass. So it's yeah, a misunderstanding there. I motion we extend it for the 30 days that Ms. Kirk is asking for. Okay, Ms. Kirk is asking for an extra 30 days. Are you going to have that in shape no, in 30 no, days? No, no, okay. The chair will entertain a motion to amend the previous order of non-compliance allow a respondent until April 1st to come into compliance to be returned to a meeting for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 a day. Ms. April 1st. Mm -hmm. All right, Ms. Hines, I made the motion. Second. Second. Second, Ms. Robio, all in favor say aye. 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 No. Nay. Okay. What? One no. no. One no. Who was it? Mr. Harrington. Harrington. Okay, uh, I was no. four, and you were no? And I was no. One, two, three, four to two. Or two. two. So still uh, the reason I sometimes reread is because we need all those things on the record and in the, uh, stated in a certain way. Uh, even though it seems easier to leave half of it out. <clears throat> you do good. Okay. Uh, so our case number 15, oh, do you want to take, let's take a Well, we only break. have, we have three more cases to the new okay. ones. All right, what, what is take the pleasure break. of the board? Take a break. Mr. We'll take a break and we'll take, <laughs> I, I think a five minute break is fine. Um, those of you that are left that aren't doing, if you're doing a new case, the old cases will hear an order when we come back. You have any candy? The new cases, if you're candy. here okay. for a new case, I'm sorry. please come right. and sign up and we'll hear your case first. Okay? Actually, Mike's got the list over there. Thanks, I'm Mike. going to call a new, a, a new case. I said we finished the old cases first, but I'm going to call a new case. And it's case number 25. Do someone have patience to see? That person here? That's you. Excuse me. That's you. You said it was 25? I am 320 yes. 840 North Fairfax. Oh. <laughs> okay, good. Well, All right, we'll hear you. Okay. 
State your name and address for the record, please. Yeah. Kathy Mathopoulos, 940 North Halifax Avenue, Daytona Beach, 32118. Well, there's Tony. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That's where you live. That's where I work. That's the address. My address is 321 North Halifax Avenue Drive, Ormond Beach. Oh, oh. Okay. I think we have to make it clear to people that uh, they need to state their address for the record. That means where they live. Yes. Now we know. Um, okay, and we're just here for compliance or not compliance. And this is a business? Um, it, my office is on one side, mm -hmm. and I have an apartment that I oh, rent. Oh, it's a combination. Yes. Okay. It's commercial. Okay. Well. Is this the one you just told me about? No. This, this 25. Is mm -hmm. Okay. It's 25. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is uh, before you for compliance and non-compliance, Inspectors Mark Jones. Uh, Mr. Jones reports that the property uh, remains in non-compliance and he's asking for next cutoff court to come into compliance. Um, the um, respondent is working on it and uh, they did, uh, looks like I have here, failed an inspection in, in um, November, but um, he believe they can be in compliance by next cutoff, and so uh, that's what we're asking. Mr. Inspector, what exactly are they, has been, been the uh, hassle in fixing whatever it is? Uh, there's quite a few items on the original inspection. Uh, my understanding, talking, I've had a lot of communication with the owner, that what's remaining are uh, the windows that were not operating properly. In fact, she informed me this today that she's got a contract to get those windows Super. Uh, taken care of. All right. So. Cool. All right, Carol, uh, entertain motion on the spot at nine compliance. Do you want to say anything? Yes. Officially? Yeah. Um, okay. The the unit was really, really badly vandalized, and I did make a police report. The whole thing. I was surprised at how much was wrong. They even took smoke detectors and everything. So. I did everything on Mr. Jones's list. Mm -hmm. I also am a full-time chiropractor, full-time mom, and I also take care of my my mom. So trying to get the spare time with decent, reputable. But you will have it done in a month's yeah. time. Okay. I have That's a contract for, for that. Oh, wait a second, just a second. How long did they say it would be before they'd have your windows yeah. installed? They said three to four months. Uh, if there, the building is from 1953. So again, this was new information that just right. came up well, during the break. So it's not going to be done in the month. No, no, I was. Why don't we go to? Jim. And is that the only thing left to be done? Yes, ma'am. Is the apartment rented at this point? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Can we give it till June? Mm -hmm. Can I make motion that? I can can I recommend a progress Second. All right, we have a uh, motion can. from Ms. Roby to uh, order the respondent to come into compliance by June six three. Yes, ma'am. Can I just get one clarification and prop for her as well? The um, you had asked about it being rented. Are you asking for it to remain unrented until it's in compliance? Yeah. And remain okay. unrended until you're in compliance? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Part of the motion. If the windows don't show up, you'll tell the, yeah. right. call the inspector. Yes, Yes, Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have a motion from Ms. Roby, a second from Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we'll go back and finish up those old cases. Okay. Case 18, CEB 11-19-281, Nancy Beckman at 19th King's Hall, Palmetto. Not here. I thought we were at 15. Court had 15 and 16. Didn't we do? No. We no. Sorry, I didn't go back far enough. <laughs> 
We're on 15, right? Mm hmm. 15. Didn't go back far, I'm sorry. <laughs> Case number 15. 15, 15. CDB 0220-36. Rayfield McLeod. Okay. I hope she did. You think they missed it? Okay. We'll ask about it, because I was, I was yeah. going to get myself together. You, you wrote this as compliance. Well, it was a com yeah, what she said was a compliance. Oh. But not number 15. Is 15 a compliance? 955. 955? 955 Magnolia. Okay, okay that's in compliance. compliance. When are you going to get my copy? Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, we got to. If we could have a question on a prior case. Was it sure that there was an actual finding of compliance? For my problem. I mean, of non compliance on a prior case? I didn't know, know if that was part of the audit. Just wanted to make sure. Number 25? Yeah, that was found in, in non Was it? Was 25? It? Now I'm asking. Yes. Found in non-compliance and actual compliance by June 3rd. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. I actually think we did miss yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. Now, case number 15 is in compliance. Yep, Sarah says it's in compliance. Okay. Oh, great. Case number 16C, 0220-38, VJ said. What date was the compliance, June? Well, do we have a date for uh, compliance 15. on page 15? Yeah, we have a date for Did I just have you sign that? Yeah, I have a look because I sent it on In compliance. Okay, compliance March 6, 2020. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Sarah, Sarah, I have that. I just forgot to change it on that. He's not here. Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspector, Sir Kirk. Ms. Kirk reports that the property remains in non compliance. In fact, it was condemned on September of 2019. Um, and it was a. Uh, he appealed the condemnation was denied, but the property remains in non-compliance. We're asking for a $100 fund to $15,000. Uh, tender, Mr. I'm sorry, tender, Ms. Kirk. Okay, so he also was denied by a circuit court. Any relief? Um, is that true? There, there's a period of time that can run where he can appeal the circuit court's decision. Yes. Um, that should be up uh, by the end, sometime towards the end of the month, and the city would then be able to proceed with uh, demolition if he doesn't proceed with demolition. That's so, that's separate. That's separate case. from this case, though. Right. Keep in mind that this is the code enforcement right. case related to it. Yeah. Okay. Move to impose a fine, a hundred dollars a day, up to fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Second. Sorry, there is motion by uh, Mr. Harrington to impose a fine of. $100 per day up to $15,000 starting today and continuing until compliance is achieved or reaches the maximum, right? Do we have a second? second yeah, yes. I'm ready to do Mr. Second. Twain, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign the post. Now we're on case 18. <laughs> what about no, 17? 17. 17. 18 is 17. in compliance. In compliance. Yeah. Case 17 is in compliance. No, no case 18. 18 is in compliance. Case 17. 311. I'm sorry. All right. Case 18 is in compliance on 311. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Case 17 is not in compliance. Correct. Mm -hmm. All right. And so it's CEB 0220-39. Neil and Cora Hitchman. 
Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for imposition of a fine. The inspectors, uh, Jerome McCoy, and has been followed up with um, uh, Mark Jones has uh, taken the case and has uh, followed up to determine its status. It's currently uh, a, a rental application has been submitted and it's under review. So we're asking it to um, amend to the next cutoff. So asked for the inspection, it hasn't occurred. Uh, they, the rental license is still under review. As soon as it is approved, then we'll be scheduling it, scheduling the inspection. Well, that was that was supposed to happen last month. Uh, the rental, I don't was the rental license. From what I'm told, is the rental license was uh, submitted in February February seventh, mm -hmm. and I checked this morning, and it still hadn't been uh, received its final approval. So. I'm not able to schedule the inspection. Right, until after they get the license. Until it, after the license is approved. Okay. They've okay. submitted the application, paid okay. for the license, okay. and right. it's under review. Carol, I a motion to amend the previous order. My compliance law responded until 4-1-2020 for the subsequent meeting for consideration of fine up to $1,000 per day. That's the motion. So moved. Motion is time second. Second is where we all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Case number 18 was in compliance. We'll go to our new cases now and start with case 19. Yes, ma'am. Person is here. CEB 3003 20 52. Good morning. Good morning. State your name and address, please. George Martin Shire, City of Seven Allies Street. Angela Wiley. Okay. Raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm yes. that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay, we'll hear from uh, Cole first, and then we'll let you speak. Mr. Jackson. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspectors, Tom Kligg, Mr. Kligg reports that this property is currently in non-compliance and he's asking next call for the property to be brought into compliance. I would um, 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 I present Mr. Kligg for any questions. Okay. Let me look at these pictures. I see these things, failure to maintain the site faded exterior surfaces and no screens. Are you going to get that worked on? Yes. When? Immediately. I just got out of incarceration and right now I just got all the materials and I'm working on it. I was working on it last week and the week before. You see it in the front. I, I put up new uh, feature boards in the front. Hey, no, uh, hey, go on. Right, right at the top. That's been all replaced. The, the fish board has been replaced. I just got to hang one more piece over there. Um, on the other side, there's a, my house got hit by a car. And coming out of the apartment, there was a hit and run. I'm, I just finished restuckling it. It's like right behind that tree. And How long have you owned the house? I've owned it since 2007. And he was, he was there when I bought it, and he was the first car And what? First. I, I had a case on him in 2007. And <coughs> Before he bought it? Or no, when he bought it. When, after he bought it? Yeah. What have you done since 2007? Well, it's been painted over and over again, a hurricane, all those hurricanes that came through, yeah. got a lot of damage, and I've been slowly getting in trouble. And now I'm trying to straighten out my okay, life. Good. I just need 30 days at least so I can get into the Hi, right, Ms. Wiley, what about you? What, what have, have you helped? Uh, yes, I um, I just, uh, I buy the materials and that's it. That's all I can do. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens 
next month. They're not obviously not in compliance. So oh, they think, start working think can, hard. Do you think he can get it done in 30 days? I could probably get about 85% of it done. Well, okay. I'm going to try to put a full yeah, 100%. Yeah, let's, let, let's, uh, let's see. We'll, uh, well, I'm in favor of doing 30 days and seeing how much yeah. I was going to make a motion to give them 60 days. I would like to see some movement. Yeah. Uh, I will see movement. Yeah. Has, well, let me ask the inspector, has there been any movement? Uh, very little right now. Like I said, he, uh -huh. said he just got out of jail. Okay. And so yeah. Yeah. So Thank you. Let's, you know, we can see some movement. Next cutoff. Yeah. So, uh, Ms. Himes has uh, made a motion to find the respondent non-compliant nor the respondent to comply by the next cutoff date, which is April 1st, or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Did you find them a non compliant? Yes. Okay, I just missed it. Motion carried. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I abstain my vote. Yeah. No. Nay. Okay. No. So the vote is five to one in favor of giving you a month to fix it up. You come back here. That improve a lot of And yeah. Thank you for Thank you. All right. Case number we're going to go uh, in case twenty seven. That's in compliance. Mm -hmm. mm hmm That's what I said. That was in compliance. But that was in compliance. Well, 27. 27 is in compliance. Yeah. 27, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did somebody, okay, so mm -hmm. that's not the right number. Okay. Unless well, someone didn't leave. What happened to 20? Oh, well, no, he's got his hand. I'm 48. No. You're, you're 48? There is no 48. That's how old he is. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for, uh, for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector is Cliff Reconzone. Mr. Reconzone reports that the property remains in non-compliance. He's asking for next cutoff for it to be brought into compliance. He's had no contact from the respondent. Respondent, we don't even know the respondent is a state. We don't even know who the respondent is. All right, Mr. Uh, Harrington. Uh, making a motion to find respondent not compliant to respond to the compliance by the next cutoff date, 401 2020. If you return to consideration, fine up to $1,000 per day. Is there a second? Second. Second. Mr. Gonzalez, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Case 21, CEB 03 20 54, County Dukes. Sisenbap? I don't know how to say that. Sensibaw. Mm -hmm. Scoot over, Tony. Don't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> State your name and address, please. Tamma Duke, Sensibaugh, 920 North Halifax Avenue, Long yeah. Beach, Florida. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Do you live, is that where you live? I do. Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or non-compliance. The inspector is Cliff Reconzone. Mr. Reconzone reports that the property uh, is in non-compliance, and he's asking for you to make that finding, and he believes it can be brought into compliance by next cutoff. And to Mr. Reconzone. The house has been painted. It's just the parking issues at this point. Uh, Mr. Reconzone, there's I don't quite understand your wording here. Uh, location of off-street parking spaces, residential uses. What, what, what does that mean? The, the parking in the front yard. Oh, OK. 
We've been doing it for 20 years, so but the, now they've changed The violation of parking on the front. Now, that's, that's been, I, I, my understanding has been for quite some time. So what does the residential use have to do with the violation? It's just part of the ordinance. Of the oh, area. okay. Yeah. In a residential area. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> Politically correct. <laughs> Well, I understood. What would you like to say? Well, I understood that if I pave, concrete it or pave it, mm -hmm. that I will be allowed to park there. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to get that done, and I can't believe how hard it is to get someone out just for an estimate. I finally got an estimate of six thousand six hundred dollars for concrete. So I got a text during break from another man I had come out this morning. My sister was there, mm -hmm. and he's given me about half that, and says he can actually do it. The other two guys I had out gave me a high price plus they didn't have time to do it. <clears throat> have you gotten your permit? Permit. Have you applied for the permit? Oh, I went to the permit office and got instructions for what I would need to do okay. so I could okay. show it to the concrete. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. They said they would pull the permit since they are contractors. Yeah. Correct. I okay. first talked to Dave, Dave Country, then Dan yeah, Country. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Um, so With, next cutoff, when, when did they say they could come out? The one I just got the text from, I think he said he could probably do it within 30 days. Okay. All right. So probably we better, might as well go 60 days because yeah. within 30 days, you're a word 60 you're saying. days. I agree. I agree. All right. Make a motion, please. I, five responded in non, uh, five responded non compliance or responded to compliance by 5 6 2019. Will be returned to the board for consideration of time up to $1,000 per day. Motion made by Mr. Harrington. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Plain. All in favor say aye. Aye. I sign the post. Nay. Do you sign the post? No. Or be returned. I can't, I'm having no, 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 you yeah. have to, you have to be finished with this work by 5, 6, by May 6. Okay. Or you could be returned here and we could impose a fine of up to a thousand dollars per day. But not today. Good. Right. No. Not today. <laughs> no. Not today was compliance. I did a reprieve today. That's right. Good okay. luck. Uh, so that is, the vote was 5 to 1. Actually, you've been getting a reprieve from a, since 8 16 2019. Well, I got the painting done. Oh. That was hard to get oh. people out to do, too. They tell you they're coming, they don't show up. You yeah, know? I know. Well, they that's not it. even on. Sir, what does surfacing mean? It means painting. No, the surfacing. surfacing means painting. No, I thought th that could mean the house. Surfacing. What are you talking about? Did that mean the house? Surfacing? I think that was the parking area. There were surfaces um, on the house with the the, the painting. Okay. Oh. The painting. Paint. Oh, and she did that. Yeah, and she did that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I didn't understand that. That that whole thing is, is a little confusing because when I think of surfacing, I, think I was painting, thinking and, and painting. Yeah, it doesn't make me think of painting exactly. Okay, so, so we're agreed. You got sixty days. Right. Mm -hmm. We're agreed. You have till May six to get this cleared up. Okay. Yeah, that was good timing. He texted me during okay. the break. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. Thank Case you. Number 22, CEP 0320-56. Paul Krishna, Sanjeev, and Graham Raji. Here's anyone here? The address is 257 Fountain Lake, and the case number is 032056. No. The inspector in this case is John Stinson. Mr. Stinson reports that he's had no contact from the respondents. The property remains in noncompliance. He asked for that finding and next cut off form to be brought into compliance. Okay. Sure, I can motion by respondent not compliant to respond to compliance by the next cut off date, which is April 1st, and we return to the board for consideration of fine of up to a thousand dollars a day. Is there such a motion? So, uh, Motion Second. is Rosie. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carries. Case number 23, CEP 03-20-43. Edward and Dolores Alexander. Okay. At 925 West Miller. Mr. Jackson. 
Yes, uh, Mr. the inspector in this case is John Stinson. Mr. Stinson reports that the property is in non-compliance. Next call for it to be brought into compliance. Madam Chair, members of the board, this, the inspector in this case is Mark Jones. Uh, he reports that this property remains in non-compliance. He's asking for next call for it to be brought into compliance. The property is occupied. He's had no contact with the respondent since the case uh, uh, initiated. So the property is occupied? Yes, it is. Have you posted it? Is that how you've notified them? No, but uh, they signed the certified mail back in September, and we even had scheduled an uh, inspection, and uh, it was canceled, and I was not allowed entrance, and it had now no further contact. Did the owners cancel it, or the for tenants? Uh, uh, the tenants, I would presume, I, I can't say for sure, they were outside and said they would not allow me in. Okay. So. Okay. But this owner hasn't contacted you or done No, he has No, or, no they haven't. Okay. Who set up the inspection? It was set up through uh, with our tunnel technician, and so I would assume oh, it was so that they, the owner. Okay. Entertain a motion to find respondent non compliance or respondent commit to compliance by the next cutoff date or be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? Mr. Harrington, second. Uh, Ms. Roby? No, in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, we did 25. Case 26, CEB 03 20 60, David Schaefer. Uh, I'm asking for a finding of non-compliance <coughs> next cutoff. Uh, we had a rental inspection scheduled by the property manager on uh, December 4th. I got to the unit. It's a duplex. Uh, the property manager didn't show up, and both tenants said they knew nothing about the inspection. I've had no further contact. Uh, as I did say, the property, both units were occupied. And this one's been going on since June of last year. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, yeah, we need to start looking at that even for the new cases. Mm -hmm. um, all right, and Schaefer is the owner, and there's been no contact with him? Correct. Was it a company property manager or another person? It was a company property manager. I do not have that okay. uh, name on the property. Okay. Chair, I take motion to find respondent noncompliance or respondent commit to compliance by the next cutoff date for 1 2020 be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to thousand dollars a day. Is there such a motion? So moved. Motion Ms. Roby, second Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Sign opposed. Motion carries. Uh, case twenty seven was in compliance. Case number twenty eight. C E B. 03-20-59, Kinsey and Debbie Whaley at 152 Madison. Good morning. State your name and address, please. Kinsey Whaley, 151 Wilmette, Warren Beach. Raise your right hand. 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Jackson. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, this is before you for determination of compliance or noncompliance. The inspector is Mark Jones. Uh, Mr. Jones reports that the property is in noncompliance. Uh, he's been in, uh, he's, it was reported to Mr. Jones that the respondent had to come in to, uh, f to the rental office and he argued that he had already had what he needed, but he actually has the occupational license or the, uh, uh, the business tax receipt, but he doesn't have a rental license. And so um, we're asking for you to make a finding of noncompliance and uh, give him a ton of cut off to come to compliance. Yeah, but I've got receipts here where I came in and paid the lady downstairs. Right, for a business tax receipt, it's called, right? Is that and, what that is? And also we covered the rental application, but nothing has been done from your department yet. Well, it's not my department, but well, okay. the city's department. Okay. All right, so I have here rental needs to be reviewed. You may have, uh, you have your license, correct? But you need to have an inspection before uh, the license is issued. Yeah, can, can the inspector see it? Yeah. Even though you paid for it, I know that sounds a little. Well, it's really your responsibility, I think, to call them. I believe that's the way it works. Yes. Um, I've talked with the people down in the rental that takes the applications, and they stated that you did come in, but they also stated uh, this is back in. October 29th that you didn't felt you wouldn't fill out the rental application. No, I, we re, reaffirmed the information that they had because okay. it was the same information. Nothing changed. I, that's the only information I have in regards to the application. There was no reason to fill out a new application. I had the same one since 2003. We renewed and updated the information they had. Mr. Jones, are you saying that the new application wasn't filled out that's what the people in licensing uh, okay. inform me it's also entered into the track it program that he did not what I was told is he refused to fill out the application which is a separate application for the rental license uh, what Different. application did you think you filled it had filled out before they had a rental application on file uh, can we, can we get this? Updated the information. All right, I, I don't want to tell him what needs to be done and the way things work. So if you would explain to him, that would help me a lot. Thank you. Well, it sounds like what he said is that he wanted them to rely on his application from 2003. And if that's the case, that's what I thought I heard him say. And I went over it with him and updated everything. If, if, sure if, it was correct. Yeah, if that's the case, that would have been his occupation or the business tax receipt. We didn't have a rental right, license program at that time. So mm -hmm. he, I think it may have been him not understanding right. that he needed something new, another application. It's a newer program uh, that we started in, I don't know, 2014, I think, yeah. something like that. Awesome. And, and that required an application, an inspection. You're going to pay for the application, so you very well may have paid for it. I don't know, but you're going to pay for the process. But then it has to be inspected before you actually have the approval that will satisfy the code. All right, so here's what you need to do. You need to set up with Mr. Jones a time to inspect the property. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, just chime in. Uh, I did the research over here while you guys were all discussing yeah. it. Um, pretty much what Tony and the inspector have said to you is pretty accurate. What he actually needs to do is he needs to go down and fill out that correct application. Right. Unless no, you're yeah, saying there's no notes in here that that has been done. So um, you can actually, when you leave here today, you can actually go down there and do it now. And once you complete that application correctly, then they'll be able to properly review it and then they'll be able to schedule an appointment at that point. Does that make sense? Like I said, I went down to solve her. To okay, the well, we understand. So just, I, I wanted them to explain the process to you so you're clear about what needs to be done. Mr. And uh, that I don't give you any misinformation. 
Inspector Jones has one more case after this. Um, he'd be glad to walk downstairs with you and talk to her just to make sure there's uh, complete clarity when you leave here. Okay. And I'm okay. making a copy so of that, and then I'll purposes, bring it right back to you if you don't mind. Days. Yeah. 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 Okay. Motion. So All right, Mr. Harrington Jumps made a motion to find respondent noncompliance or respondent come into compliance by April 1st, 2020, and be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Is there a second? Second. Second, Ms. Roby. All in favor say aye. 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 Light sign opposed. Motion carries. Okay, so you wait for Mr. Jones. We'll yeah, do and this. hold on just a second. I'll give yeah, you your It won't take that. long, okay? No, no. I'm going to give the forms that you just gave me to you as soon as he's back from making a copy. Case number 29, CV03-20-66, Minnie Jordan, at 640 Cedar Highlands. There's a minor typo there. I believe it's 1640 Cedar Highlands. Thanks, John. What, what, what from? Oh, okay. Oh, it is 1640. It says 640, doesn't it? It 16. should be 1640. Yeah. 1640. Yeah. yeah, it was typo. Clean my ears out. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Madam uh, Chair, members of the board, this is before you determination the termination of compliance or noncompliance. The inspectors, Mark Jones. And Mark Jones reports that this property remains in noncompliance. He's had no contact. It is occupied. He's asking that it be brought in compliance by next cutoff. Okay. No contact? Okay. No, I've had no contact. Okay. Carol, I take motion to find respondent non compliance or respondent to commit to compliance by the next cutoff date, April 1st, 2020, be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 a day. Is there such a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, Ms. Roby. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Sign opposed. Motion carries. And there you go. Okay. So there's Mr. Jones. You talk to him. Okay. Case number 30, CEV 03-20-46, Bridget and Joseph Pena. At 1600 North Oleander. Good morning. Good morning. State your name and address, please. My name is Bridget A. Pena, 1600 North Oleander Avenue. And your name, sir? Okay. Raise your right hands, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You both live there? We do. Okay. I'm married, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. This could have been. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or else. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Jackson. Yes, the inspector in this case is Mike Fitzgerald, and uh, Mr. Fitzgerald reports that the property is is still is currently non-compliance, uh, and he's asking for it to be brought into compliance by next cutoff. They did make him aware that they're uh, anticipating a sale, and if that should occur, then of course we have steps that we'd have to take with, when that occurs. Would would be citing bringing the um, the house is for sale. It no, it, it actually sold, and we did provide the signed contracts. Um, the title company, company GNL Title, sent the sent the um, sent the purchase contract, the signed purchase contract, over a week ago. Okay, so so that sounds like we're going to end up um, starting over, but <laughs> but we don't have any of that yet. We'd, okay, so we'll just find. Uh, he thinks uh, he does we, we called and spoke to him two days yeah. ago, and okay. he confirmed that he did have it, but I do have a copy. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little confused. Well, well, is the contract for sorry. sale? Or, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, when, when I say he don't have yet, I mean, he does. apparently y'all don't have a recorded deed yet. I mean, I'm sorry. Never mind. No, I mean, but the, I mean, the, when is it closed? When do I mean, you go to the, the, the closed the, on <laughs> we closed. We signed out there on 24 February. It's done. 28 February. The title company processed everything. Okay. They confirmed. They emailed it to Mr. Fitzgerald's office. He was out of the office attending a class. Okay. Mm -hmm. We didn't find out until Monday when he called them and said that he didn't. All right, have we'll get all the square. I think yeah. We so they got the settlement. Yeah. So we'll we'll just. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, that's the check. Yeah, yeah. Got, in fact, we, we have 12 days remaining to vacate the property. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So we find the respondent non compliance. Non compliance. Okay. And then that means everything will be taken care of in the next month. You won't have to come back. Well, well somebody that else that. may have to come back. Right. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, that's yeah, so not up to them, but, you know. Or, or continue it. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, we probably need to either uh, just continue this, or uh, if we have something we feel we need to verify, yeah. or just go ahead and pull it. Do you want to continue, Tony, or do you want to not? Well, I think McCaffrey's going to have a suggestion in just a moment, okay. but because if we go make a finding of noncompliance, it's going to be a finding that occurs after the sale. It appears because yes. it appears that yes. they're providing yeah, a right. record okay. of sale. So we'll just continue the case. Well, we could just go Unless and draw. we have some. I mean, it, uh, we got a, we got a settlement statement. That's enough to generally mean that the sale is taking place is, yeah. and that the new owner is going to go on. Just yeah. to continue the case. Okay, so Mr. Cena kind of believes, and I agree. We, I mean, the worst thing happens. We pull it a few days after we finally right. uh, get everything confirmed. Oh, we so that's, the case. Mm -hmm. But what we don't really mm -hmm. want is an order. I make a motion that we continue this case. Is that what you want Wait. to do? Just continue Wait. the case? What do you want? Continue. What do you want? No, I think we should do it. It's not a compliance. Okay. It's not a compliance, but these people are relieved of the responsibility. Right. They don't know. Right. They're not the owner. They don't own it anymore. So, right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what you're saying. So I think we need to maybe throw it out and let Mike put another case. Another case or a new case? To the new owners. Yeah, okay. We insist that we no. Who cares? Yeah, we, we insist on the request of, of, of that we'll go ahead and withdraw. Yeah, right. okay. we we'll insist. Yeah. We'll right. That solves that problem. Is there a motion to withdraw? We're, we're okay. No, no. I, there's, no motion. Wait, there's no, motion. Withdraw. no motion. Is our, withdraw. Our no motion. No motion. No motion. No motion. Okay. Okay. Apologize withdraw. for whatever confusion is this one. Period. You have one, right? You have one of these. He's withdrawn. Okay, he just didn't know what he had. I'll take a copy for the fire. <laughs> All right, case thir Thank you very that much. way they'll know. Case 31. Right. Case, case number 31, CEB 0320 51, Daniel O. Yancey. Okay. <laughs> hey, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> yes, the inspector, and this is Mike Fitzgerald. He reports that the property remains in non compliance. It's minimal stuff. It should be able to be brought in compliance by next cutoff. Yeah. Any contact? Uh, no contact, but they, they're out there doing it yesterday, so I expect it to be painted by the end of the, by the, end of the week, actually. Okay. okay. We have a virus that's supposed to be. Uh, any questions? Anyway, Chair will entertain motion to respond to non compliance or respond to come into compliance by the next cutoff date of April 1st, 2020. We return to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion. Uh -huh. Motion, Ms. Roby, is there a second? Second, Ms. Himes, all in favor say aye. Aye. Like, sign, oppose. Motion carries. Almost there, guys. Case 32, 03-25-55, Floyd Mastronardi. State your name and address, please. My name is Floyd John Mastronardi. I live at 402 Auditorium below our Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Uh, the inspector in this case is Mike Fitzgerald. Mr. Fitzgerald reports that the property remains in noncompliance. Uh, he's asking for a finding of noncompliance and next cutoff for the property to be brought into compliance. He hasn't had any prior contact with Mr. Uh, Mastonardi, uh, but I do um, attend to Ms. Fitzgerald. I had um, Mike Fitzgerald here today, Tennessee's Code Enforcement, Mike Redoso's I, I When I went to post the property, I, I did talk with the gentleman and uh, we would discuss what we're going to do with the house. Yeah, actually, I, I have an uh, intent to sell uh, to Home Solutions, previous case. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'd already signed it, agreement to purchase real estate. Uh, they already put a thousand to. Southeast professional title and for, for base price of sixty five thousand. And okay. my initials and signature. What do we have? 
You have a closing date on there? Uh, April 15th, April 20th. Closing on or before April 20th. I'm curious, where's the home base for Home Solutions? I think. Uh, to LLC. What's the return address on the envelope? Ah, good. None. They did. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Just curious, doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. They gave you a closing date of April They did. 20th. April 20th was the closing date. Brandon. Yes. Brandon. I made sure they sent me a hard, hard copy because they wanted to do an email. And I would Good. Sure. Yeah. Getting your steps in today, John. No, no. <laughs> do you want to do 60 days? I think so. Uh, board like discussion, do we give 60 days? Yeah, that way we well, if they're going to be it. selling it, what? I, well, they mentioned what is one? Yeah, I, that's yeah. okay. I, 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 that's not up to you. That would be up to them. Yeah. Or, yeah, uh, uh, Madam Chair, yes, the, our, our recommendation in this is that we go forward on them finding them non compliance, give them 60 days to come into compliance. If, if it sells, then it sells. We'll have to deal with that and, and we'll. Um, move right. on to start working with the new owner, new owners, but it hadn't closed yet. We don't know what will happen. That was what I was kind of saying. The last one was apparently it had already ha happened, but in this situation, it hasn't happened yet. So, and it, and it shouldn't really impact their uh, sale because it's not a, a an encumbrance, uh, or at least it's not a a, a, a fine mm -hmm. at this point. So that's our recommendation: that of finding them non-compliant, sixty days to come into compliance. Okay. Chair, I'll entertain motion for respondent non compliance or respondents come into compliance by 5 6 2020 or be, uh, or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 per day. Um, motion, Ms. Roby. Second. Second, Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion carries. Okay. You'll have till May 6th to get it. Okay. Right there and Good luck. Paper back. Don't leave. Case number 33, CEB 032048, Freddie and Victor Peralta. Thank you, John. State your name and address, please. Victor Peralta, 5411, Fort Orange, Florida. In where, Florida? Florida. Fort Orange. Orange. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. And pull that microphone up there so we can understand you, please. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chair, members Jackson. of the board, the inspector in this case is Mike Fitzgerald. Ms. Fitzgerald reports that the property is in noncompliance, and uh, he'd like for you to make that finding. And he believes that the um, Property can be brought into compliance by next cutoff. He has an expired permit. Um, and I'll let Mr. Fitzgerald speak to that. Um, but he believes they could be in uh, compliance by next cutoff. When was the fire? Uh, last year. Last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we didn't look at the last case either. That was from April of last year. This is from April of last year. Uh, and the fire was when? Um, I don't remember the exactly day. Well, g generally. Well, when was the permit that expired issued? Um, Mr. Lucas was, was on everything, and, and he passed the inspection and everything. So he's supposed to do the outside. Do, do we have a date for the fire? Has anything been done since the fire? Uh, yeah, he, they pulled a permit and they started working. So when did they pull a permit? Uh, within a month of the fire. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of what I was. Yeah. Get. So then they worked through it. They got about ninety percent done. Okay. The all that's left was just the, uh, the the fascia board, and the permits being finaled. Okay. Let's go with the thirty day. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Okay. Yeah, and we fixed the windows. Okay. See, I can't see. For some reason. And we we fixed that. That's four twenty four. Four twenty four. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the uh, new pictures. 
Okay, and that's still, 2019 still under, too. Yeah. Okay. Do we have anything more recent? Yeah. Okay. Can you go back to the beginning? Because that'll be. There. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just hard for me to see those. Three eleven. That's what it looks like now. <coughs> oh, okay. And okay. the only damage that I have that's left is the fascia board. Okay. 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 And, okay. and, and, to do the and closing the per permits. All right. Okay. And do the tax re rental receipt, right? Well, anybody yeah, working, the tax, are people working there now? A business uh, license. Uh, I'll, I'll go down with you now. <laughs> okay. All right. Chair will entertain motion to find respondent non compliance or respond to commit to compliance by the next cutoff date, April 1st, 2020, be returned to the board for consideration of a fine of up to $1,000 per day. Such a motion? Some of. Ms. Roby, second Ms. Himes. All in favor say aye. 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 Like sign opposed. Motion carried. Case, okay, so just keep going. Good, okay. thank you. <laughs> okay, case number 34, CV 0320 47, Janice and Philip Rod Rodenbaugh. Who's, who's left out here? Are, do you have a case? What is your case, sir? Uh, whatever. There's only a couple left. 50. He's the last there's, one. 30. There's four left. Well, if you're the last person here, let's go. Well, ahead. there's another gentleman, too. That's oh. my brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's my brother. Well, what did he do? Yeah, yeah what is <laughs> he here for? He's just <laughs> with me. <laughs> that's my brother. <laughs> He's a good brother. He, he is. Yeah, yeah, these are all good for yeah. him. <laughs> State your name and address, please. William H. Leneve. 1236 Bellary Drive. Case number 38. 38. William See, H. Linney. The there you go. Yeah, the very last. Raise your right hand, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Okay. Madam Chair, members of the board, the inspector in this case is Mike Fitzgerald. He reports that the property remains in noncompliance. He's asking for uh, compliance for the next cutoff. Uh, and uh, I'll turn to Mr. Fitzgerald. Okay, this was from June of last year. Have you done some work, sir, since June of last yes, year? Yes, but I, I'd like to explain the situation because I don't really understand what's going on here. Okay, go ahead. Well, I've been working on my house for a year and a half now. Okay. Been living there. Okay. I replaced the plumbing. I had the old cast iron and had a leak under my yep. It cost me hundreds of dollars. Replaced the floors. Basically, I won't say I'm remodeling it because I love the way that it is, but I've been fixing everything up. I've been mm -hmm. doing that for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. I have a neighbor who doesn't like the fact that I've chosen to work on the inside of the house where I live as opposed to the outside of the house. Okay, you weren't cited for anything inside the house. No, no, I wasn't. Here's the thing. I've been working steady, working every day. I'm 70 years old. Uh, I, I live on a, a, a fixed income, Social Security. I have stage 3 COPD. I have chronic degenerative back disease. And I've been very proud of being able to tell everybody that I can still do the same things now at 70 that I did at 25. Okay. It just takes me three times longer. <laughs> and I say that because I've asked people, including my neighbor, to be patient with me. All right. What, yeah. we're at, what the city is asking you to do is get the outside done. No. That's what the city... They're not... What, what, are, I, I wanna, what are the code violations? Well, it says paint fading and peeling. I... If you want to have um, a conversation with Mr. Fitzgerald, that's what you should be doing. I think I did. Yeah, we've had conversations yeah, we many had times. Conversations. So, and I do think, you not? And I want to ask you this question. Are you my normal code inspector? No. Okay. So, you just have right, Wait. Wait a minute. This conversation needs to be directed to us. If you two are going to have a conversation it can be held someplace else. But what I'm suggesting, man, with all due respect, I know you guys have a tough job, but I'm saying that I <coughs> I feel that your what you guys do, which is a very necessary part of any government, is being used to harass me by a neighbor who is dissatisfied 
with the way my house Okay, is. Well, and that happens occasionally that you will find an unhappy person that lives next door to you. What the city is asking you to do so that their complaint won't have any validity is to paint the outside of your house. Can you get that done in the next 30 days? No, I can't. Because I'm going to explain to you why. Okay. First of all, I didn't hear anything about this. It was done on, on, on the 17th. Okay. I left Daytona Beach. Left the Daytona 17th of what? Of June. In 20, last June? The last June, right. I left on the 15th of June for a medical emergency because rapid heartbeat, COP, 3D, my doctor could not get me. So I went back to Richmond where my old doctor was because he could see me. I ended up being up there for a couple months treating my illness. Okay. While I was there, the guy who cuts my grass called me up and says, there's a note on mm -hmm. your door. This was in July or August. Mm -hmm. And I said, what is it? And he said, you know, you're, you're out of code or something, some code violation. I spent the next week, <clears throat> not 24-7, of course, but I spent the next week trying to find out what it's all about. Called the police department, everybody who was in charge. And finally, I called the old code inspector who told me that it wasn't him and that he can only imagine that what's happened, that someone called in and complained on a day that he was not there. The, 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 Mr. Fitzgerald, okay, can let I, me tell you something. Mr. I, Fitzgerald is now in charge of your case, correct? Yes. What can, would you like? This Mr. case was Rahim open during an operation of that entire area. Okay. I had that block, right. so I opened up right. uh, like. Okay. Ten, ten cases sure. okay. on that one block. Mm -hmm. No one called me. It was just an operation. Okay. He received the, uh, the notice. Uh, I got the notice back that he didn't get it, so I posted it on his property. We had conversations of his illness, and we gave him a lot of time. I see that. And just ran out of time. You know, here's the thing. No, here, no, 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 no. Uh, let me explain something to you. You are getting to the point where the board will, we, while okay. we're, will listen. I find him very intimidating. I'm sorry. I'm I, I want to be heard. Well, you have been heard. We hear you. I don't think you hear us. And you are challenging us every time you say something. We are trying to work with you, and you're just absolutely refusing to do that. You, you no, know, that, I'm not, that, that's not. That's not true. All right, so that, I we're want, just I want okay, to we're done. That's it. You, all right, let's. Uh, I, I want to know what no, exactly I'm can sorry, I do. I, I have, have a complaint that I'd like to hear. I'm really, we're done. I'm ready to make a motion. Go ahead, please. Okay. I would uh, motion that we find them in non compliance and uh, give them 30 days and then start a fine of $100 a day. Can't do that. No, you can't do that. All you have to do is find them in compliance or not compliance. No. Okay, well. Uh, next starting uh, today, has to come into compliance by April 1st. Mm. Okay. Or be returned to the board, and then we can set a fine if it doesn't do that. So move. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Gonzalez made a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second, Ms. McLean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Motion carried. Mr. Fitzgerald, just for the next hearing, could you take some up close pictures of what of the paint peeling? Is it possible that you can do that? I will try my best from the street or the sidewalk. Okay. okay. Yes. And it's the it's the chimney is just yeah, but not a lot. so we have a real no argument that it exists. Okay. All right. Maybe he can wait for you outside and you can tell him. <laughs> <laughs> what, excuse me? Yes, yes. 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 The case is over. All right. Uh, case number 34. Four. Is that where we are? Yes, ma'am. Okay. CEB 03-20-47. Janice and Philip Rodenbaugh. Not here. On this one, too, you see? <laughs> this is from May. Yeah, by the um, way. Okay. Last May. So the uh, the property has some damage up there on the top mm -hmm. above the uh, front porch. 
and around the side. So it's a painting the property exterior, and the gentleman, that's what he does for a living. He paints. So I met him the other day. I thought it would have been done before here, but mm -hmm. next non-compliance next call. Okay. No move. <laughs> Second. All right, Next. we have a, a motion from Mr. Harrington and a second from Mr. Roby to find the respondent non-compliance or his final committee compliance by the next cutoff date for 120. or be returned to the board for consideration of fine up to $1,000 per day. All in favor say aye. 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 Like side of both. Motion here. Do we have any more? Yeah, yep, 36. 36 and 37. And 36 and 37, all right? Okay. Case number 36, CEB 03-2044, Michelle Day Brown. Yeah, well, no, nobody's here, so okay. <laughs> nobody's here. I've uh, spoken with the tenant who lived in, who occupied the property. Um, the property's in non-compliance, and I'm asking for them to come to compliance with my next house. Pretty old house. There it is. Oh, yeah, oh. That's, not the right, that's not the same house, <laughs> right? Yeah, go ahead and bring one. Yeah, that's not the same house. It's still a nice house. Yeah, it is. The my neighborhood, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least their front door's big. That was the complete <laughs> photograph for uh, the other case. All right. It was up there? It was. Uh, it was. We it saw was it for a second. <laughs> You should look quicker. I know. I know. I was sitting in a blank. That's right. <laughs> Cannon Street. Cannon. Hmm. I don't even know where Cannon is. Do we is. really need the picture? No, it's, I mean, it's not No, we don't have to have the picture. Let's just go on. Move. So, like, we can move it on. Okay. Well, okay. We're... He wants them we believe to what formal. Mr. Fitzgerald says, so the chair will entertain a motion to find the respondent non-compliance or respond to come into compliance by the next cutoff date, April 4th, 2020, be returned to the board for consideration of fine of up to $1,000 so per move. day. No move. Motion, Ms. Hunt. Second, Mr. Harrington. All in favor say aye. 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 Like Here we go. Opposed. Motion carries. There you go. Here's the picture. That's quite a different. Yes, yeah, much different. Yeah, okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Case 37, Thomas Veal Trust. This, this is the letter that yeah. you have. That yeah, what, what is this? I couldn't even know. After many years of renting this house myself, what does that mean? He rented the house or to someone, he, yeah. somebody he rented to someone? Do we know what that yeah, means? Yeah, and then he turned it over he to a manager. He, that, he had that it's B, right here. He had the BT license and not the RTL, and he didn't know. Well, this is about whether you can get on there. Okay. Yeah. see any of the work. So he doesn't live there. Well, no. whoever this person is. Who is this person? Sitting in his four to six weeks. Tom Veal. Okay. He so doesn't live there. No, that's there. a trust. This is he, rental property, mm -hmm. right? Yes, we're asking for non compliance and the may cut off. Okay. Good. It's short and sweet, like it. I make a motion, uh, non compliance may cut off. All right. Um, Ms. McLean has made a motion by the respondent non compliance and order the respondent to come into compliance by May 6th or be returned to the, I mean, sorry, April 1st or be returned to the board for consideration of fine of $1,000 per day. Do we Second, Ms. Roby. May 6th, was it? N not May. Did you no. say May? He said May. Yeah. You said May. Oh, you said I'm May? sorry. Well, okay. I just said. Uh, scrap that. It's not May? It's no. May. It is oh, okay. May. I, I didn't hear you say two months. Why two months? I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they've got the windows on order. That's good. All right. So there's a motion for May 6th. And, the, and it's... That's Seconds, okay. Seconds. All right, that was my confusion. Sorry. All in favor say aye. Aye. Like sign opposed. Nay. Motion carries. Motion carries five to one. I have a question before we adjourn. Yeah, we're not adjourned yet. I have a couple things. Go ahead. Well, uh, I do too. Go ahead. I can't hear a word you're saying. Not one word. You're lucky. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you say that again. I have a, I have a question. 
I must have missed me. There was a change in the dorm rules. What, what was that change? Mr. He, Captain Lee has that information for you today. Oh, okay, because I didn't know that there had been a yeah. change. Yeah, that was the, an ordinance that uh, right. uh, amendment to the code. Yeah. Okay, so Captain Lee's going to come up and explain he, those changes? He, he, oh, he is. not here. So he let is. me... Is there anything else anybody wants? Is he wants still to? out with us? Uh, yes, he is. Is there anything else uh, anybody would like to talk yes. about? Yes, they want to introduce. Yes, want to introduce uh, new inspector. Okay. Or ask them to introduce themselves. Come on up. Who's this? No. no. <laughs> Welcome to the crazy world of cold university. Will you check with him and see if you can relieve him so he can do that? What's your name? Hello. Hi, I'm Lewis Chaff. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Do it Hello. Where are you from? Can't do it right now. I'm so. from like Clay County, okay. Florida. Yep. Cool. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Roosevelt Butler. I'm from Orlando, Florida. Great. Lawanda Tamango. I live in Deltona, Florida. Terrific. That it, is that all that's new? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a semi new right, one. I have one more thing, and I want your opinion on this. Uh, I was thinking about changing the order that we do uh, the agenda and putting the lean reviews at the end. I love it. Let's do it. <laughs> and the reason is because they take too long. I think at one time that we did them at the end, and I think ultimately the decision and the reasoning behind the decision to bring it to the front was to let everyone else know what could happen if you don't. Well, do what and you're that to. part of it, I see. I see that part of it. That yeah. So um, wasn't our move. I think it's the board's move. It was then, and we're fine with whatever order. I, I don't think there's think anything that would be uh, problematic well, from a. There ain't no problem. I'm yeah. not opposed, but someday in a workshop we need to just talk about why they take so long. There may be the kind of questions we ask yeah. and what we, that, that's how, for a workshop. Bet, bet, well, that's really one of the reasons I wanted to move them to the end is because maybe they wouldn't take so long. Don't, I don't know why. I mean, yeah. You know, we've been in some real convoluted discussions mm -hmm. on, on that, so maybe someday we can mm -hmm. discuss that. So I'm in favor of it. You're in favor of it? I'm in what, favor of it. Uh, do it next. I think it's the same, either in the front or the back. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. What do you think? I think it should be in the back too, because okay, well then, or, and we need to we'll step up it. our thing he as to we ask questions sometimes don't need to be questions that asked. don't pertain. We have, right. I, I think one of the things that and I thought we did it better today, sticking to. I mean, we had five lean reviews. We got them done in an hour, and that's not that yeah, bad. Good. Because uh, well. sometimes. One lean review can take an hour or so it seems. Um, yeah. I have, well, just one one of the things that you do want to remember is with lean reviews is that there's no real um, procedural right, I guess, because right. it's I mean because it's not a uh, it's a discretionary act of the Correct. of the agency. So you all have been uh, given that authority to, to exercise that discretion of the agency and and make a decision. And it's based on getting as much information as you can. So when you're asking about things, I don't know how far out of bounds you really can right. be. Now, with that being said, of course, y'all yourselves can kind of govern and, and you know, call each other into let's bring ourselves closer mm -hmm. to what we're, what we're trying to right. really figure out. Maybe we're not, this is what we're really trying to know. So why are we asking? Well, I think a lean review is, you know, when you see a window broken, it's obviously, or whatever, it's not in compliance. There's not a lot of, you don't have to have a lot of extraneous discussion about that. But with the lean review, I think you have to consider the cities recouping their money for going through that whole thing. Plus, you have to give the respondent the chance to say why they took so long to do it. And that. You did, you did that. Yeah, so I mean, I think those two, yeah, more questions to answer than there are, and they're not that straightforward always. That, but I think if we just try and keep in mind that we need to stay on the subject, um, yeah. that would probably work better. Um, and we, let's, you want to try next month moving sure. to the end mm -hmm. of the, yeah. Okay, let's try it. Okay, let's try it. Good, we'll try that. 
Does that make extra work for you? <laughs> no. Just put it in a different order? <laughs> mm -hmm. Just check it. <laughs> Actually, it's probably easier for me because the lean reviews, I have to wait till they come in. Uh -huh. So then I end up having to reorder them anyway. Yeah, okay. I, I have an observation before you started. I, I tried to get the attention. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. I, I hope That's okay. That's okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, some people might not take it well, but I have a, a question of equity. Okay. Uh, seems like some similar cases, we come out with different decisions. And, and that's why you get some nays from me. That's because okay. I think that if you have a similar situation, it should be treated same. equitable, yep. the same, mm -hmm. not different. Okay. And so I've, I've kind of observed some of that, and I, and I wouldn't be doing you right as a fellow board member if I didn't bring it up. I, I have no problem with that, and I agree with you up to a mm -hmm. point. I think that all these cases are Indivisible. individual and substantially right. different from one another. Correct. That, so, but I, I encourage you to vote. Whatever your conscience is, and the way you you. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, that's okay. why we that's why we have a board, right? Right, right. We're now exactly. Six different right. opinions, right? And have different opinions, right? Mm -hmm. so, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I would uh, be here to present to you information about the dorm living, but um, there's a variety of things going on right now. Uh, <laughs> Believe me. Not be ready to talk to you about that. Okay. Um, the, uh, do know, they pertain to that or just to everything else? No, it just oh, no, isn't. there's no issues with that. Oh, okay. I, yeah, it's fight week. Uh, right, no, yeah, okay. That's the magistrate right. code board. Right, okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, Friday, Friday, Friday the 13th is tomorrow. Right. Remember a couple of years? A couple of years ago, we forgot about spring break. Yeah. Yeah. A couple, couple of years ago, we didn't meet this week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's right. We sure yeah. did. Yeah. We, it would be worse for us to skip it. No, I know. I Yeah, because we've discussed that before, but there's just. There's so many. The, the caseload's so heavy now. We, if we skip it, we're in trouble. Yeah, um, you're, in trouble. Yeah, so, you're in trouble for April. Yeah, we'll, Thank we'll you. be. Uh, we'll be for prepared. The I'll be prepared to discuss as much as I can possibly discuss about dorm living with you guys on, on okay. the next meeting. Um, and I think that's, that's really all I have. Yeah, this was not. This was a request with this. Uh, Neil had not heard or seen you or anything. So. Um, yeah. So you can, but, yeah, we'll but, provide you that. Yeah, you can tell us. Mm -hmm. be, right. Well, tell maybe us email it to us so we know before the. Oh, absolutely. That we can we can work that out. We'll have a June yeah. Senate tell you so that you have it in advance. Okay. That way you could review it. Maybe have some questions. Right. You think if you have gonna, questions when you're reviewing it in advance, it'd be even right, better for you. No, right. Yeah. In advance too. You think we're going to have fewer or less cases involving dorm living? Um, I think you're going to see fewer. Uh, we made a. A good hard push this year about it. Um, we've seen that some of the folks that we were um, needing to address by kind of fine tuning this uh, ordinance um, have already started to sell the homes and stuff and move on. So good. Um, I think that we're we're gonna probably see less eventually here. So I, I think it just basically it just changes. I mean, the definition of family unit is a little broader. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you say that? Yeah, it's a little. It's exactly. Yes, yeah. it's, it's a little broader. Yeah, yeah. A little clearer, a little. Yeah. Um, more inclusive. Yeah, exactly. I know. I know the officer tired. He had to jump up more. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I can say it. Oh, I have one last question for you. Go ahead. You. you mentioned two months ago at a neighborhood meeting about Air, uh, Airbnb types of things, and that was going to start coming to us. Is that way um, late? Or? No, they probably will not come before you. Um, Good. The, in fact, um, so we're in the process of acquiring a software that helps us with short-term rentals. Um, that'll hopefully be to the commission sometime in April. Um, if that's approved and we go forward with that, there will be a tremendous amount of cases that come within probably three or four months of that starting once we get it up and running. Um, and it will be too overwhelming for the magistrate and the board to handle. We will pr we've already discussed uh, creating a third or second magistrate, so it'll be a third meeting for the month, and we'll probably funnel all the short-term and long-term rental cases to them, which will alleviate some of your workload as well because you'll, you're still seeing uh, uh, long-term rental cases. Those are right. RTL cases that you've been seeing. So. So we won't. It won't be initially all of it shifting over to the other magistrate. It'll be 
short term rental because the the abundance of cases that are occurring. Right. And then we'll start to balance the three um, as best we can, so that it's the it's equitably the uh, sh the work was equitably shared. I think what you netted uh, four inspectors over the last three months. I mean, I, yeah, add five, but lost one. Is that about right over the last two months. Yeah, it's a uh, it'll it's a total of four additional positions, one of which still is filled as a supervisory a supervisor role. Um, it'll be posted later this month probably. Um, but we have a the num the numbers will increase is where Tony's going because we have more inspectors, um, and we have smaller zones, so they're working more diligently in those areas. So. And so the short term rental thing, you're going to start getting after people that have illegal short term rentals. Yeah, in fact, there was one a couple months ago that um, the person did it after signing an affidavit right. they weren't going to do it anymore right? <laughs> yeah. and, and was fined ten thousand dollars some hefty fines related yeah. to it what's considered short term anything less what's than six, six months, months in a day six months. and then you, you said it the captain are they dealing with it in tallahassee now <laughs> well, yeah, there, are, there, there are some stuff and you'll hear that occasionally that there's some bills that are working their way through the state um, what's in what's going on right now is still from my understanding won't affect us because we had um, a zoning laws in place to address the city before all this was right. we, 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 the city was 2014, something like that. If you had it all, if you had it all, they'd leave you alone. I am taking him to lunch and wherever else he wants to go. All of the stuff is still keeping you in there. Right. Dripping on my chair. <laughs> I've had another down by the river. Yeah. I had another guy. We could because the ordinance is is older. You know that happens, right? Yeah. Mostly.